All right, welcome back, everybody. I got hot, fresh coffee and art in the morning. This is Dee Dee. We are a live show on Ustream.tv if you're watching the recording on YouTube. Thanks for watching there. If you're watching here in the live chat, if you have a question, put it in caps so I know you're talking to me. We uh, did a, a review a little while ago of the flow book for paper lovers so there'll be a video of that up in a, after a while and so now we're just uh, because a lot of people are asking about different color books and which ones they should color in or want to and we all have tons of color books so I thought and I, I know I'm not going to hit every one I know I'm going to forget some of them but I thought I would show a, like a color book review and these will probably pretty much all be what I did last year these are color book pages um, that I have colored last year. My hands are a little cold. See, I just turned on the heater. Respecting snow in Atlanta. All the bread sold out in the whole, in the, in the whole state. There's no bread to be found in <laughs> Georgia. Okay, so um, the first thing that I want to show here is my binder. So in my binder, any pages like out of my uh, Bennett Klein books, one, two, three, four, The Dark, any of his books, which are your eight and a half by eleven, eight by ten, if you you know, depending on the border, but eight and a half by eleven size pages that are one sided, like my Jasmine Beckett Griffith, my um, a few other ones. I will take them out of these books, put them in page protector sleeves, and put them in a binder. I will look at them much more than I will if they're just on a shelf in books that are unfinished. This is this is the, the last one I worked in was this this one here, and I'm pretty sure I put it in here. And what I'll do on a one-sided color book page is I'll take it out. I will put a piece of black cardstock behind it, and on the back of that cardstock, I will write the name of the book and the the artist. And, and you can put the date, you can put whatever you want on it. But I would recommend writing on the back of your page the book you got it out of and uh, the artist so that you don't forget that. So these first ones here are out of my Bennett Klein books. Um, again, there's probably one out of one, two, three, and four in the dark. Anyway, they're on the back. But because I can put double pages, so like on the back here is another page. So this way I can look at them. Now if you really want to, and I showed these the other day when I talked about Bennett Klein's pages. If you really want to see, see, look how different they kind of look with the page protector. It's, you know, more matte. And plus the glitter of the stickle shows up when you pull them out. But I just feel like this is the best way for me to um, revisit. It's kind of like my color book portfolio. Now, if you have pages let's get rid of that glare if you have pages that are 10 by 10 nine and a half not you know the larger square color books they are not going to fit in these page protectors so if you did want to sleeve those what i've done is i have a 12 by 12 color book um, or I'll have a 12 by 12 idea binder that i'm probably going to designate to color book pages uh, to put larger pages in. So if it's like a 10 by 10 page, I can put that on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and put it in a larger binder. The ones that I do not tear out of a binder, I mean out of the color book, are ones that have stories to them, like my mouse guard. Now this one is already, you know, 10 by 10. So it's not going to fit in these sleeves anyway but it's also a story it's a continuing thing so i don't want to separate them out of the book so if you have like the hobbit the sherlock holmes the outlander any of those that are story themed like that you probably want to leave them in the in the book itself because you know if you want to color a whole bunch of them you want to keep the story together Whereas things like this, they're individual stories in and of themselves, and I will take them out and put them in this in this binder. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So, but you have to be flexible to do this kind of thing because if you like all your color books all lined up on a shelf, nothing bent, torn, or you know, then this this system is not for you. Me, I will just I will take apart a a, a journal, a color in a heartbeat. Doesn't bother me at all. 
and re revamp it. So, but I, I do understand that not everybody can do that. Yeah. So you'll need it goes, I don't see my mind! Exclamation, exclamation. See? Some people just can't do it. And that there's nothing wrong with that. I'm just showing you how I do it. <laughs> okay, so these are my Bennett Klein ones that I've done here, right here at the beginning. Uh, he's in the front of the book. And this is the one we just finished. Okay, and there's videos. I think there's videos on the bulk of these. Um, I don't know if there's one on this, and I don't know if there's one on this one. There's. I think there's one on this. There's one on this. Uh, definitely one on this. This was a ten-parter. This was the longest series of a color book page I've I've done. This had like ten pa ten uh, parts. So those are my Bennett Klein ones. Then here's my Doodlers Anonymous. Now, again, I know you all can't do this. I tore the cover off mine. I tore the cover off my book and made it into a um, divider. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so these are my Doodlers Anonymous pages. I did tear out the uh, intro page and about the page. And then here's all my Doodlers Anonymous pages. Again, hopefully, guys, I, I, I'm fighting the light outside. It's going dark and light, dark, because it's getting ready to snow or rain. Um, yes, uh, yeah, Ben, I, when I post Bennett Klein, he's always so nice. And, and, and guys, if you do not follow Bennett Klein's uh, group on Facebook, he has a, a group. He's so nice, so generous. And everybody over there is so nice. Yeah, and he, I follow him on Twitter, Twitter and Instagram, and he liked my page. Yeah, so so these are all from Doodlers Anonymous, and I'm not going to talk about them. I'm just going to kind of flip through. Um, none, of, like for instance, the, none of this water was here. Paint your own stuff in. Make your pages your own. Okay. Here's Ocat. That's the owner of uh, Doodlers Anonymous. I put a tattoo. I put a tattoo on him. <laughs> and Doodlers Anonymous did a nice write-up on me on their site, too. Again, if you want inspiration for doodling, creativity, illustration, go follow Doodlers Anonymous uh, website and group. Oh, my gosh. You will never, ever be out of inspiration if you follow Doodlers. Just saying. So these are all pages out of Doodlers Anonymous. This was a double page spread, so of course I kept them together. Again, none of this was here. I made it a stormy sky. I know, I love Doodlers. I have, I have two copies too, Terry. <laughs> I love me some Doodlers Anonymous. So you can see, I've got lots of pages here of Doodlers. And we did, this was the last one in Doodlers we did. We, um, we did uh, Fibs, Friends in the Box. And we put all these little letters. I say we because we're doing it here live. It's we. <laughs> and there's the vintage typewriter. And yeah. And I always try to uh, accent or keep the profile, the artist that drew it, by coloring it different or making sure that um, making sure that the artist's name doesn't get covered up. You know, I try to do that on all of them. Like right down here. On the water, I made sure not to cover up the artist because I want to know the artist that drew these. You know, we're just coloring these. Every Friday with Bennett Klein, it's, yeah, he gets a freebie sketch. Yeah, I'm like, no, he's all so generous, so kind. Okay, then the next section I have, this was off of Sketchy. This, you know, where you uh, can uh, draw, people upload photographs of themselves for you to draw. Well, they had a Sketchy did a color book thing a few months ago. So this was the picture that I colored for that challenge. Somebody posted the um, image of a, of a girl to color. And uh, so this was the one I selected to color. This one is out of, this is just out of one of those generic color books, I think. It's on the back. Uh, and what I do, though, is I'll take a, a color book page and, like, I painted in my little emu here. Added some collage here. So just because the color book has, a, you know, a designated something going on, doesn't mean you can't take it apart, revamp it, repurpose it, 
add your own touches to it because you know my saying, you're the boss of your color book. <laughs> and I just have dividers. I haven't even put the tabs in here yet. This one is from the Kimono. Um, this is from Creative ha Haven. I think it's called K Kimonos. And I did have a YouTube girl ask me um, about the makeup on these. So and what did I use? And I'm almost 100% sure it's color pencil. So it's just a color pencil blend out to do her makeup. And uh, yeah, this one was out of... And I'm, I'm again, guys, I could take the backs off and see what page they all are. This was um, a page that had um, these cherry blossoms. So what I did is I added my own collage elements. You can see where I added clocks, watches, all around. This girl is just out of a magazine. She's just a, in the fashion magazine. But her outfit and her clothing and everything just fit to what I wanted to do with the cherry blossom. So I added my own little watch parts to her and and did like a wash of pink over her and colored her in and made her kind of blend in added all the stars behind it so yeah so don't be afraid to make a color book page your own if y'all have any questions just put them in caps i'm trying to i'm kind of zoomed in here and just kind of making sure i can get the whole thing here uh, and here's another one out of the kimono book again it's, she's just got blended it's just like it's just one color actually it's just a, like a dark pink or a light red with white over. It's just all just blended. So, yeah. So, color pencil. Added my own little dots to the background. Thanks. Yeah, I like the pink and black. And again, I cut this out of the book. Cut this out of the book and mounted it on a piece of black cardstock. Okay. Then we have the Jasmine Beckett ones. I have, let me show you her two books here. Her two books are, and I'm also in her Facebook group. This one is just her first color book here. And she's a painter. So what she's done is she's taken her paintings and done turned them into line art and turned them into color books. So like this. Okay, and I've done flips and show and tells on all these books at one time or another. If you look in my YouTube playlist, look under color books, and everything that I've done with color books is in the color book playlist. Okay, and I tear these out. This is one that I'll tear out. I trim down, so I never care about getting out of lines. Like if I'm painting the background, it gets off that line because I know I'm going to cut it down right on that line and mount it on a black piece of paper. So this one is her first color book and then she came out with the Halloween one. Again, I'll just quickly flip through so you get the idea of some of her artwork in here. And I really enjoy working on these because of the faces. I love doing her faces. So here's some of the ones that I've colored here. And again, I had my own background Okay, I painted the background stars, made, gave her like a halo. So don't think that just because that's not there, you can't add it yourself. I love me some painted backgrounds, especially black with space. That's just, I like doing that. So here's another one. Again, the names of the girls, the, of course, Jasmine Beckett, but the names of the pieces, I think this is Sea Beacon. I think this one's called Sea Beacon. I painted all the water, did all this with paint. And then you can go back in with color pencil. Painted the sky, the stars, the planets, put all that in. Put a glow around the ship and a little bit of glow around her. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of fl flip through just so you can kind of get an idea of some of the pages that we've colored. There are videos for these. Um, I think there's a video for this one. I don't think there's a video for this one. There is a video for this one. So there are process videos for most of my color book pages. Not all of them, because sometimes I just want to color and I'm not making a video, right? So, <laughs> uh, same thing for her. We did her with dark skin and I made her have like braids. I put those in to give her 
a, a nice braid here. So, and there are stickles on this. Let me let me take one out to show you. I did add stickles to them, like there. See, so she's glittery. So you can add your own touches to them. And again, if I'm not mistaken, I have probably done all the pages you're getting ready to see within the last year. So, this was one of the Halloween ones. And again, let's see if you can see. Now I have to take it out for you to see the stickles. Because the plastic sleeves want to flash it out or make it. So, yeah, you can see the stickles on her. And we use paint to paint out the eyes like that. This is all paint. Made our own, everything in the background there. So, and added stickles. You can add any kind of glitter, wink of Stella, whatever, you know. Just give it a little bit more oomph. <coughs> and we did that one around Halloween. And we did this one around Halloween, too. The cupcake, again, the cupcake and the spider legs have stickles. And when I say stickles, what's one here? If you're going to buy any stickles, I would recommend just buying the diamond stickles because in any color you go over with that still shows through. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, guys. So here is stickles on the spider legs, stickles on the cupcakes. Let's see? And then there's her little face. And then this one, the Children of the Corn one, that's what I named it. Uh, there's no stickles on this one, but uh, did her to look like um, Children of the Corn. Uh, we added our own little uh, things in her hair and all that, made it look like static. <laughs> and uh, added paint to make her look like she's in a patchy fog there. So yeah, so let's see what else I got in here. The most of the other stuff I have are little bits of things to color. There's my Johnny Depp from uh, <laughs> that uh, Janet sent me. So these are some different pages from different books that I haven't colored. Um, now this one is out of the lookbook right here. Um, she, I did her twice. I did not cut up my lookbook, but this is a copy of one because I also sent one. I sent another girl to Paula. I sent one to Eileen that I colored. So um, if I did, you know, a couple of extra good ones for, you know, for um, I wanted to thank somebody like Eileen. I sent it to her for sending me the uh, Zig Kiritake brush markers. And I used the Zig Kiritake brush markers and, and did one for her. Okay, so then let's see what else. Mom sent me a Beatrix Potter one. And this is one of the uh, Mary Inglebright mom colored and sent to me. Um, this is the only page that I've colored out of the uh, comic book. And again, some of these in this book, I'm going to have to kind of look a second to see if I can actually find the book. Because on my shelf, I've got shelves and shelves of color books. So here it is. Okay. So this one is, a, I did copy this one so I could shrink it down. I wanted to shrink it down to the comic book size because see how big the book is? The book is way bigger than a comic book, uh, actual comic book. So I printed one out and shrunk it down so that I could make it the size of a comic book. So this is the only page that I've colored out of this one. This was one of the clearance books at books, I mean at Barnes and Noble. And it's all vintage, vintage uh, comic books. They also now have a vintage, spa um, fa not fantasy, um, science fiction one. They have a vintage, I think, like Lone Ranger. I mean, they have all kinds of ones like this. Um, so this is put out by Omara. In, uh, out of, well, originally, I mean, they're out of uh, UK, but I'm sure they have, you know, their uh, publishers here or their distributors here. But anyway, so this is the only page that I've colored out of that one. Um, let's see what else do I have in here. Here's one out of the Mary Inglebright. I only have the Mary Inglebright red. There's also the Mary Inglebright blue 
and I say that's the cover. And there's also a Mary Inglebright Christmas. I think Mom has the red and the blue. I just have the one red. And again, I'll, I'll try my best to grab the cover, you know, grab the books to show them to you. When I go to flip through the books, where you, you'll see I have one or two things colored in them. Mary Inglebright. Here it is. So this is out of this book, and again, because the book is a, a good standard size and one-sided, this is the kind of book, it's not a story, it's not, you know, a, a complete story kind of book, it is um, just, you know, random different illustrations and sayings and, you know, Mary Inglebrightisms, then I'll color this and I'll, I would tear these out, put them in sleeves. Okay, then I have some from the, there's four out now, I don't have the new one yet, I have the first three, Somerset Studio Coloring Studios, let me show you those, I'm getting my exercise today guys, jumping up and down here, so I have the three here, and these are put out by Stampington and Company, the coloring studio from Somerset Studios. Y'all know if y'all familiar with Somerset Studios. And by the way, the new Somerset Studio art journaling magazine has our Packer die in it again. So she's in the new art journaling magazine. I saw it yesterday. I didn't buy it because I wanted to buy the flow book and it was $30. So I didn't buy the new uh, art journaling magazine yet. But Packer die is in the new edition. So. If you uh, like the art journaling, it's called art, I think it's called art journal or art journaling, and it's one of the Somerset Studio publications. Packer Die is in that issue. Um, okay, so the coloring studio, here are the three that I have, and they do have a fourth one out now. So again, these are ones, and, and if you know, if you know Somerset Studio, they always have tips, tricks, we ask the artist, these kind of things in it. And then they have the coloring book pages, but they have lots of articles. If you don't want to lose these articles, then cutting these pages out is probably not what you want to do. Uh, but I don't mind. I read the articles. See, look, I've cut out different bits here. Uh, if you um, read the articles and not care about keeping the articles, then, you know, color them and put them in your, whoop, put them in your binders. <laughs> Okay, so, hang on, I got my itchy, uh, my eyes itching. Uh, <clears throat> so again, I painted stencils. Sorry, my uh, daughter just flew out from LA to visit her relatives in uh, up in New Jersey. Her, well, her in-laws. And uh, now she and Hubster are on a group text, and I'm going to get every message they send to each other. So let me move the phone off to the side so we don't, because <laughs> it'll be, they're going to be talk, chatting for a while. So again, I, you know, made it my own. This is a collage element here. This is a collage element here. So, hey, Miko. So, um, you know, use collage bits. This is from, um, I don't even know, I think it's a piece of jewelry. I'm thinking it was a watch, and I painted out the numbers and made it into a necklace. Made her look kind of like an Egyptian queen kind of thing. This is a piece of jewelry that I cut out and glued on. This is all stenciled and painted in the background. So don't be afraid to take a color book page and totally make it your own. Don't feel that you can't alter it in any way. You can, because you're the boss of your color book. Again, these are some that are out of the Somerset Studio. I think they republished this one in a little uh, example in one of their books of my work there. But uh, we did drippage. This one was the Tim Holtz uh, design that uh, I added a watch face to and watch hands and some little you know things there. But this was this was originally a de Tim Holtz design for Somerset Studio, so that one's in there. And then this one we did out of the Somerset Studio coloring studio using just crayons. This is all Crayola crayons. So, just so you can kind of see, there is a video for this, I'm pretty sure, 
but we just used a box of 64 Crayolas and did that one. So even if you just have color crayons, you know, you can still, you don't have to have all everything to, you know, have fun coloring. So that's the only ones that I have actually in this book. Uh, I've got tons more coloring pages, but those are the ones that meet my criteria for being torn out of a book and put in a binder. All right, so the most recent one that I'm working in is The Mouse Guard. I love this book. I love The Mouse Guard stories. I love the books. I love I love the illustrate. I love everything about Mouse Guard. <laughs> and um, so I'll, I, I've, I just showed this one the other day because we worked in it. But I did the inside cover again, guys. You know, camera doesn't like white no matter how I fix the settings. So let's see here. <sighs> So I'll try to show you the pages I've colored, and I have posted these. Um, well, I should say no, I haven't posted. I don't. I haven't posted them in my Facebook album yet. So yeah, I have not posted. I think I posted one on Instagram. So I still have to post all the ones I've colored. So these are the ones that I've done so far, and this is one in in process. It just has a wash on it, and and those don't have videos. This one has a video right here that we did this week. Let's find it. This one. We did this one in a two-part. Uh, part one about maybe a week and a half, two weeks ago. And then I finished this up on Wednesday. So this one is a completed... Um, this does have a two-part video to it. So we finished this one on Wednesday. <laughs> yeah, I know. Matt. Well, of course, Mad Rat Lady Emma is going to love... She has, she has pets. <laughs> so anyway, we did do this one. And I, again, I'm not going to do flips on these because I've done flips on them on all the books that I'm showing you. But I love me my mouse guard. Again, it's a complete, it's like story um, theme thing. So, and it's 10 by 10. So these won't get cut out and put in a binder. All right, so there's that. Let me make a little room here. I gotta keep I gotta keep shuffling things around the circles. Alright, so now let's see what else we can show. Alright. I did one page out of this one, and this one has about a four-part video. This is out of Epic Journeys, and I did buy this one at Books a Million. And it is four uh, five, one, two, three, yeah, four different artists did mini stories. So the four artists did like six pages each in a little mini story. And I've only colored one page out of one of the stories. And again, this is on video. I won't go through the whole book. But there is a, I believe it's a four-part um, series coloring this page right here. And again, let me tilt it so you can see the stickles and some Wink of Stella in her hair. And so, yeah, this one does have multiple part colored this one. The mouse guard, you get the mouse guard at Amazon. Yeah. <clears throat> you can probably get all these at Amazon. Uh, like this one I picked up at Books A Million, some at Barnes & Noble. Um, but you can get anything at Amazon. Yeah. Okay. And again, this one has multiple artists with... Uh, and it gives a little write-up of each of the four artists. And a six-page story by each one uh, is awesome. I love this book, too. You know, there's just so many color books, so little time. They're called Epic Journeys. Okay. Uh, for Eileen, real quick, because she asked about this. This is not exactly a color book, and I haven't worked in it yet, but this is a book of color charts. Um, Y'all know that I want to plan on, in February, I'll, I'm, I'm telling all my family I want Copics for my birthday, so that I can start doing, and I, I'm not worked in Copics at all. I'm not a marker girl, I've told y'all that, but I want to go ahead and try. So I'm going to go ahead and try to do some Copics, and you'll be seeing me start from scratch. Not that I've never picked one up, I mean Cameron loves them, and he works in them all the time. I said, Cameron, you're going to have to give me some tips 
on how to use Copix. <laughs> but uh, I thought it would be fun to do do it, just because people always ask me, well, what do you, how do you, you know, what about Copix? I don't, well, I don't work in Copix. Well, so we're going to start from scratch and try to learn some Copix. The Curiosity Shop one. Curiosity show. Yes, I have been. I will show Melody. Let me pull. I, I am. I have started in that, and I've only done one half of a page. I just pulled it out to show that too. So the color charts here, and again, I've done full flip throughs the through these. Um, it's got uh, different. It's broke out by first. It's just got a bunch of generic color charts, but then it breaks it out by like here are facial features. Skin, so you can practice all hair, and it's broken out by different um, charts and ways to color these things. I think that you know, really, this is going to help be helpful for Copics. Now, I can't do a color chart in this. Uh, well, I can as long as I put something behind it, because you know, Copics are going to go through pretty much anything. If you're going to use Copics on your color book pages you almost are certainly going to have to either obviously put something behind it or make a copy on a better Copic type paper to do the color book pages using Copic markers. I'll find out which ones work good for it and all that. But you always want to have in your color books in the back page always have a blank page where you can test whatever you're going to use. Whatever you're going to use. Okay, so um, yeah, this one's got clothing, nature, and it's just broke out for you to practice or, you know, to color chart uh, and mix. Like, you know, you could have five shades of green here and see how you can use those five shades or six uh, shades of green on this bush or a flower. Or if you just want to see what colors you're using to color a rose. There's just so many multiple ways you could use this. You're looking forward to the co-picking co with me? <laughs> well, don't get so excited yet, Terry, because it's all going to be from scratch for me, too, right? It's going to be from scratch for me, too. I'll, I'll probably go watch a couple tutorials so at least I don't just pick up something and go, what? <laughs> but anyway, so you can see how they um, use, I'm pretty sure those are probably, well, no, I don't know that those are Copic. Yeah, I think those are Copic numbers. They got the C, uh, Y, yeah, so anyway, well, whatever they're using. You can you can see how they're charting out the skin tones. So, and there are multiple kinds of these kind of books, and you don't even have to have these. Um, I know Prismacolor, Copic, you can print out charts. A blank charts to fill out and fill your own out like if you have a Copic you can fill out which Copics you have you can do blends with it and just test it all same thing with color pencil or any of it any of it okay um, okay so the curiosity shop um, I think this one kind of got lost in the shuffle because we we move on to, you know, when you have so many color books, you try to show them all. You try to at least do one page out of them uh, because you love them all. Yeah, um, I announced it, I think, last month, Miko, um, but I'm not, I haven't even bought any yet. Well, here's a couple of issues. One, I'm waiting for my birthday, February, so I told my family that's what I want. Um, number two. It is hard. They're sold out everywhere. I knew they'd be sold out at Christmas time. It's hard to find larger sets of Copics. I'm going to have to try to find a source where I can buy like set A, B, C, or D, one of the four. Um, I think I, I think somebody recommended the set B because it had the most flesh colors. So I'm going to have to you know decide which set. I want to buy one of the big sets, but. Every place I've looked, they're all sold out. Now, I'm sure there's some secret Copic sites that you can buy these from. So if you are, uh, if you know where to buy the big Copic sets, I know I can buy some of the smaller ones at Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Use a coupon and get a set of like eight. They have the sets of eight basic colors. They have the set of skin colors. They have a set of pastels. And you can buy, you know, a set of like eight with a coupon and get them 50% off. I want to buy one large set of the hundred, I don't know how many, 72. 72 come in one of the large sets. I want to buy one of the four large sets 
I think set B is what people have recommended with the most flesh tones. Anyway, they're sold out everywhere. Uzak, Queen Pam. Okay, let me write that down because, and I haven't just, you know, I've just gone to the main sites that you would go to. Marker Pop. Okay, let me, I'll check out Marker Pop and Uzak. Thanks, Susan and um, Queen Pam. Miko said, I'll talk to my guy for you. Wink. <laughs> ah, Miko. So anyway, um, <laughs> oh, you got your you got your birthday card, Janice. Good, good. Yeah. Some of the mail, my mail got a little behind during the holidays because Hubster, you know, was off work and you know the holidays and you know two three days off where there's no mail and yeah. So yeah, I'm glad. I'm sorry you got a little bit late, uh, Janice. But happy birthday, a little late. Um, okay. So anyway. That's what I plan on for my February birthday month. So, back to the curiosity shop. I've only done, and I'll do a quick look. This one goes up like, you know, like a calendar. The the seam is at the top. And uh, so I'm going to have to kind of tilt it a little so I can do a flip here. But it's all things out of like a ye old curiosity shop. It's like different corners of the shop. Different shelves you would find in a curiosity shop. And we've only colored one, and I'm not even finished with it. So, just saying. Here it is. It's a vintage art supplies, which somebody had to tell me that's what they were. I mean, I knew I saw the brushes and anything, but I didn't realize that all of it was vintage paints and vintage mediums and vintage. I just thought they were just vintage bottles. I didn't even think about them being art supplies, even though there's a whole bundle of brushes here. So this is as far as I have. I'm not finished, but this is as far as I have on this um, only page that I've worked on in the Curiosity Shop. The blending... You need the blending groups that haven't bought since I have investigated. Yeah, yeah, I know that. Yeah, I know. I haven't. Yeah, we'll we'll learn it together. We'll learn it together. Okay. So anyway, this is um, this is the only page that I've done in here, and I still it needs more tweaking and a little bit more shading. It needs some highlights on the bottles. Um, you know, like let's see here was my Posca. I can use some highlights on the bottles. You know, in different spots where the light would hit it. Okay. So, we haven't done any of that yet. <laughs> but, I really like this book. I love the idea of all the different shelves and things in the Curiosity Shop. But, this is another one that takes a while to color. As does... You find it here. Oh. The Colin Thomas or Colin Thomas, uh, I think it's I think it translates to Fantastic Books or Fantastic Books. It's in German, so yeah. The the there's not a lot there's no text really per se except the write up about the artist. So if somebody wants to tell me the exact translation from the German, um, I have worked in this one. I keep moving, shifting things around. I have worked in this one. This one I'm working, you know, and some books like Anamorphia, Imagimorphia, this one. There's a few books that I work on multiple pages at a time. In other words, I'm not finishing. We'll be brave together. Yes, Terry. Uh, and so um, I don't finish one full page. I will work continuously throughout the book until a page may, may get finished. But I'm not trying to finish a whole page and moving on to another. Imagimorphia, um, Anamorphia, and this one are three of the books that I work on uh, just bits here and there. So my approach to this one was to work, and there are other places in the book that I finished further along, but my my uh, plan in here was to finish all the shell or get all the shelves at least not maybe shaded completely but have the shelves the color theme that I'm going for fantastic coloring book is the translation thank you I thought I knew it was fantastic book I didn't know it was fantastic color book thanks Anita 
<laughs> Anita, of course she would know. Yes, are she's such. I think Anita, aren't you German living in Belgium, or are you Dutch living in in Belgium? I can't remember. <laughs> anyway, she knows German. Thank you, Anita Petka. Anita. Uh, okay, so again in this one I have done. Now I'm not haven't done every shelf. But I, my plan is is to color the shelves, and then again, oh look, I just colored some green trees. I went through and did a lot of green throughout the book with lime green. I knew I wanted the lime green to be the green color that I used throughout the book. Again, it's it's an ongoing thing, okay? So I'll get back here to some more of the shelves. This is probably the most completed page that I have in this book. Okay, I've done the borders around the edges and started with washes of washes of uh, Neo Color 2 and then I'm sh going in here and shading. I did go in here with the white Posca and do all the little white dots that you see there. You're German living in... I thought you were... In, why did I think you were in Belgium? Who's in Belgium? Uh, oh, that's Little P, isn't it? Little P's in Belgium. Oh, I try to keep up with you guys. I really do. <laughs> she, but Anita goes, I'm German, living in Germany. <laughs> yeah, U Uzak is out of stock on the sets. See, and so is the, yeah, I know. It's, they're hard to find the sets. I mean, are, are they not trying to restock sets? I don't know. So anyway... Well, yeah, we'll see what we can do. Oh, it's an awesome book, Claire. It is an awesome book. Have you not seen it yet? Oh, you'll want it. Trust me. <laughs> so I did do a little bit of the uh, dotting there. Okay, and then some of the sunflowers. So again, here's just some washes of green and brown. And when I say washes, it's going to look very faded out because there's no shading done yet. It's just the wash of Neo Color 2 or, and or watercolor. I might have combined both. But there's no shading and depth to the pages yet because I've not gone back in and done the pencil work. Okay? So, yeah. So, there's just so much to it and so much of it are shelves and, like, here's an example. So, I did the teal, the teal shelves some of the background shelving, a couple of the plants. And so for me, if I color the shelves in first, I, I can distinct, I can um, distinctify, I can distinctify, I can distinctify. <laughs> I can make a distinction between the shelves and the different little um, areas, right? So if you do color in the shelves first, then you can work on the little vignettes in each little shelf area one at a time. That's how I'm approaching it. You're going to have to get in here. Okay, okay, J-Love. <laughs> you have a good day, too. Uh, this one, I've got the shelves done in a kind of a yellowy-orange color and started coloring all again. I wanted the green, the main green in this book, to be like a lime green. So I just went through and picked out. This is the kind of book where I will take this book and one green marker and go watch TV. And I'll watch TV and go through the book and just with the green marker... One, you know, the green, I think I use the green um, Kurtaki brush pen with one marker and just go through and just color everything green, <laughs> you know, while you're sitting there, you know. So, so this one is like here, look at all the green. Now, that doesn't mean that that's finished. I can still go in there and shade and blend and other things. But it's just something to keep your hands busy if you're watching TV. Just sit there with one marker and go through a whole book and color everything that's that one color. It could be like you could take red and do anything with reds or hearts or, you know, anything like that. Here's one with all blue. And again, every little shelf, Claire, and there's tiny little things. And there's, there's takes on um, the books. Like he'll, uh, he'll do, um, I, I can't really see them really well right now without my magnifying glass. They're very tiny. Um, 
but he'll do a, a riff on a on a title. So. So you see I've done some of the little mossy bits down here in the green. Um, you can get it on Amazon or I think this, uh, the Book Depository. I think the Book Depository. Yeah, this one came, the Book Depository, because I recognize the, uh, yeah, Book Depository. But I'm sure it's on Amazon too. So you can see how I've done shelves. And again, not all of them yet. So yeah, fantastic color book. Thank you, Petka. Anita. All right, then let's quickly look through Anamorphia and Imagimorphia. <clears throat> These have more finished pages. I mean, I'm still working through, and I'll, I'll, one of the, the Imagimorphia, I think, yes, Imagimorphia, I have gone through and I did a wash on every page that had an animal on it. I washed, I, like, I did a watercolor wash on every animal um, in this book I think every one I might have missed one or two and then I'll go back I missed something enabled me should be with me in three to five days <laughs> Claire I know we enable yes yes we do <laughs> it's definitely on Amazon thanks Terry yeah for some reason uh, we're having some link um, Ustream is having some linking issues today I don't know what's going on, but anyway. So, in Imagine, now, Anamorphy was the first one, so let me go ahead and do that one first. And they're both by Kirby Rosans, and he also, if you see it in green, I think the green one, if it, it was the um, European version, I think, if it has green lettering, but it's the same book. Okay, um, and he also has the little sketchbook. One of the girls sent me the little, his little sketchbook. Cameron loved it, so I gave it to Cameron. So, yeah, he's got the little sketchbook. Um, <clears throat> he loved that book. <laughs> so he, he took that one. Well, I gave it to him. So uh, um, in Anamorphia, again, this is what I'll start out with. Uh, let me say a few things about it. The paper is thin. If you are going to add water medium to it, it will wrinkle. It will wrinkle <laughs> and buckle, especially because you're going in large areas. If you're just putting water, um, watercolor or water soluble mediums on a small section in a color book that has thin paper, it probably isn't going to matter. It's not going to buckle. You won't notice it. But on a large area like all the animals in this book, it will wrinkle and buckle. I'm going to see if you can see it. But by the time you finish painting and doing everything to the page, you do not really notice it at all. I don't. And if I do a little bit, it just doesn't bother me. That's why I always say, though, test in the back of the book. Find a page and test to see if, if, if you're going to get the results you think you're going to get. So don't email me if your book buckles. Don't email me about buckling books. <laughs> okay, so here you can see I've done a wash over him, and now I've got to go in here and do the detail. And that's the case with, now this is not the one, this is the one that I have washed every page, okay? This is one that I've just worked in here and there, and I have done, again, here's one where we have two colors of wash on, and you can see where it's buckled a little. Here's the thing about when I use do color books. Most of the time, I'm going to paint the backgrounds with acrylic paint. So when I go to paint this whole background, whatever color I decide, you're not going to notice the buckling because, especially by the time you do the backside, it's going to flatten it out with all the paint layers, okay? So, yeah, it just doesn't bother me to have a little bit of buckling on a, on a watercolored page. But it does many people. So, just saying. Okay, so I'm not going to go through every page. I mean, th there's been many flips and shows of these books. We, we've had them for quite a while. But I want to show you again. Like, here's a wash on him. I do have finished pages in here. We'll get to those. But I want you to see how if you put a wash of uh, watercolor or neocolor or any kind of water, you know, even watered down acrylic paint 
water down. Now, if you do water down your acrylic paints, and I just use Americana craft paints, if you water them down, you have to water them down a lot. If you don't water them down a lot into a wash, they're just going to cover up everything. Like, you just cover up those spots. Because acrylic paint is opaque. So you're going to cover that stuff up. So I would recommend, if you are going to do a wash on anything, if you're not used to really watering down your acrylics, which, you know, I'm used to it, you you probably want to use watercolor or a water-soluble medium that's that's translucent or transparent because otherwise you're just going to cover up all your <laughs> spots or, you know, you're going to cover up all the ink color, right? All right, so let's get here to... Okay, so here's a finished double-page spread. The background's painted with acrylic paint. That's a dark blue acrylic paint painted in the stars. A wash of orange, a wash of blue, and then gone back in there and color pencil. Okay? Are you going to get Myth? Oh, yes. I will definitely be getting Myth Morphia. Yeah, Myth Morphia is coming out. And also, uh, when we were talking about um, Bennett Klein, he's coming out with a dragon book. So he's got a dragon book coming out. And Kirby's got a Myth Morphia book coming out. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, I will be. Um, so, yeah, so this one is fully done. I have a few that are full, full done in this one. Here's just a wash on here. This one is done. So, again acrylic in the background acrylic I can do an acrylic wash very thin very watered down acrylic paint but you you have to realize how thin that water wash is that acrylic wash is because otherwise you're just going to cover up all your lines um, I think Dee Dee should go go to her pages um, I, I don't, yeah, there's a link there, Eileen, but I can't go, you know, it's not even a clickable link because links aren't working for whatever reason, Eileen. For, yeah, I don't know if you were here when we were talking about it. Yeah, links aren't clickable. Okay, so this one, I, and again, I try to keep at the most five main colors um, with the qualification that, like, when we did the, um, when we did the uh, Bennett Klein deer, there's there was multiple animals. Like there was the deer, there was a parrot, there were hummingbirds, there were lovebirds. So obviously if you have multiple animals on one page, you're going to have to use a lot of different colors. But to try to keep an overall cohesiveness to your color book pages, if you stick to f like five or so, this one even has less, main colors, and then just have some accent colors for other things, your pages will look so much more cohesive. Snaps is saying inspired to work in Anamorphia with the Imagimorphia. Yeah, yeah. Yes, um, you, that inspired you to go f do washes in it. Yeah. Hey, Sarah O., yeah, there's some trouble with the links for whatever reason. No, I will not iron my color book pages, although I'm sure you could, you know, but I'm, I don't, yeah, I don't mind the little buckle. And look, on this page, I can feel really no buckle at all because it's so coated with paint and so many layers of color pencil. So, yeah. And I do post my color, my finished color book pages and color, where I've used color book bits, like in the napkin journal and different places. I do post that on my Facebook. I have an album. If you go to my albums, you have to go to pictures and then albums. And you don't have to follow me to go, I made them public. Go to my album and I have a color book album where, and it's got tons of stuff, tons of stuff in my Facebook album of all my color book pages. I try to always post the cover of the color book with the page, you know, or at, just at least once. I mean, I'll post the cover of this so that when I say I worked in Anamorphia, you'll know that it's this book. So I, I'm trying real hard to give credit to all the artists that do the color books. 
I do my best to, when I post on YouTube, anywhere. I try to put, you know, coloring in Kirby Rosanne's, coloring in Bennett Klein. I try to uh, acknowledge the artist that did the books, and hopefully that promotes them and their color books, you know, that they're trying to sell. Okay, so let's keep moving here. Here's just a wash on him. Another wash on this one. Did I miss one in there? This one's finished. The iguanas. And again, I kept with a black background, a lime green, a teal, and a yellow as the main colors. There's little touches of other colors in there as well. Red, other little things with the little creatures all over, and the brown branches. But I kept with main colors. The greens and the trees are the same as the iguana. You know, the spider web is a teal that I used in the... So you can see how it makes it cohesive that way. You like the sound of the crinkle, twinkle toes? Yeah. <laughs> the guys, you, uh, you are putting links in. They're not clickable. They may look clickable to you, but they're not working. So when you guys are, for whatever reason right now, Ustream has got a... Uh, um, a link thing going on. You may be able to copy and paste it. I haven't tried. Suzanne, have you tried to copy and paste that link? So, yeah. Anyway, so you can kind of see we've added white little details. Just kind of holding it up so you can kind of see a little bit more of the depth of the color book pages. Okay. The links worked for. Okay, well, see, they're not even showing up as clickable for me, Jean. They're just, uh, you know, HRF. You know, they're not even. They're not even links. You're not kidding. <laughs> but if they're working for you guys, that's great. This one's still in process. Oh, and the other thing, I left this one like this for a reason. The background here, I did my own little patterns. So with paint, after I painted a background, I went in there and did little designs in the background. So just, you know, so you don't have to know, you don't have to do stars or whatever in the background. You can do whatever you want in the background. And this one's not done yet, but, you know, it's in process. Again, a little bit here, a little bit there. This one I worked on, this is kind of like my demo page. <clears throat> where uh, I, to show the difference between where it's been had a wash on it and where it's had um, pencil added to it. Hey, Laura, anybody else popping in? Oh, so I just need to refresh. Okay, thanks, Jean. I haven't refreshed since I've been here. <laughs> I'm barely drinking my coffee, Jean, let alone refresh. Okay, that's good to know. So if the links for you guys are working. Okay, so for instance, here is like with just a wash on it. It's got a wash of the yellow ochre, the orange, and the teal. And here is where the pencil has been added. And the thing about putting a, either an acrylic or a watercolor wash on something, it gives it tooth. The page is so smooth and, and you know, you, well, you know what paper feels like. But if you add some paint to it, whether you wash down acrylic or use watercolor, neocolor, then it has some extra tooth to it. And it gives your pencil, in my opinion, it gives your pencil much more depth. So there's with just the wash, and there is where with pencil on it. So I keep this one kind of unfinished just so you can see the contrast of the two. So, yeah, that's a, that's a good example there. And then here, again, here's where it's just got a wash. And then here is where you can see we started adding color pencil. So you can see the difference from like right here to right here. See where we've added the dark blue and there's none here. So that just kind of shows you the, the, the difference. I saw that you said you messed up your wash, Laura. You did it too dark. I would just keep working it. Do it with pen. Go over with pencil. Oh, sorry, Eileen. Flamingos. <laughs> okay, so that's in Anamorphia. So in Imagimorphia, 
is where I went. I spent one Saturday a couple of few months ago, three, two, three months ago. I spent a Saturday. I didn't have anything to do that day. So I said, if anybody's not streaming, come on over. You can wash, watch me wash all my Imagimorphia animals. I, I got to say, I did get a negative comment on that, too. They thought it was, like, stupid to do that. But <laughs> I, I didn't care, you know. And usually, most of the time, I get a... Um, a mean or crass comment. I don't get many. And thank you, YouTubers. You're so good to me over there. I rarely get a bad comment. But occasionally I'll get one. And if I comment back, nine times out of ten, that person will delete the comment themselves. And my comment goes with it, of course, because it's attached to theirs. So I don't get very many mean comments over there. But I did get a comment like that was stupid to do this. I didn't care. They deleted their own comment with mine attached to it. But anyway, <laughs> so thank you, YouTubers, for being so nice, because you are. <laughs> okay, so, and this is where I, I went through and did a wash over every animal in here. And now I, I will go back and add things, like the painted clouds and shading the animal. But I thought that what would be fun is if I had all my animals washed and clean and ready to go, <laughs> then when I would pick up to go color, then and the and the and I want to do the backgrounds too. Um, then I would be able to just go in and work on the detail. So then I can now just take a couple of pencils. I can take you know four or five you know shades of orange and whatever, and just take this page and go in. You know if I'm watching TV or it's at night, Hubster's watching something, and I'm sitting there with them, I can just color on this page because the bulk of it's done, right? The bulk of the uh, washing and the background stuff is done. <laughs> I know, Jean. I know. I know, Jean. That was hilarious. Okay, so here I've got the background painted, and I started doing a little bit of detail. I did some splattering. I did some ombre-looking, you know, shading there. And now I can just go in there with and markers too, guys. I don't. Uh, I know we were talking about doing Copics in February, but I want to show you. Remember, guys. I'll just pull a couple out here. I love me these Crayola. I just pulled <laughs> that happened to be all these colors. The Crayola water soluble. Now these are not water. They're not watercolor markers. They're you can get a little minuscule amount of blending with these, but these are not made to blend like watercolor markers. These are just kids water soluble marker. But these are so much. I need to go to the zoo and watch animals. Oh my gosh, Eileen. These are so fun to use, especially on these little bitty areas. Now I have found these will not go through the page. Even though the pages are thin, they won't go through the page as long as you don't go there and go, eh, you know, like 20 coats, right? Did you like the sound effect? But like, for instance, like here's a little pterodactyl in here. You can go in here, and as long as you don't, you know, go, um, don't over, um, you know, color, 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 that it won't go through. So we'll do a little brown, and I'm not trying to blend, I'm just adding a couple of colors here. But these markers are so fun for coloring little things like this, little areas that you just want to, just, you know, just color in a solid little color. Now, you can always go back and shade on top of this, too. Make sure it's dry. I always reiterate that. You have to make sure if you use any watercolors, markers, anything wet, you want to make sure it's 100% dry before you go in there and with pencil. Because it won't, pencil will not go over wet, um, you know, markers. Well, watercolor pencils will, but, you know, we're not talking about that. Yeah, I know. I love it for little areas. It's just, you know, that just works. And then if I wanted his little eye to show up, I'll just put his little eye in there with white. <laughs> so, and you can get a set of 50 of these for, they're normally like $10 for 50, like at Michael's, Hobby Lobby, whatever. But use a coupon, you can get them for uh, 6 you know, five or six dollars, depending if you have a forty or a fifty percent of coupon, and they last a long time, 
especially if you're just coloring little things like this these will last you trust me guys if you just want to get something to color with uh, other than your pencils these kids watercolor they're called super tips Crayola super tips and they have this like bullet tip and what's nice about that, and I know I'm saying some of the same things that y'all have heard me say before, but what's nice about them is you can get a wide tip, a medium tip, and a thin tip all in one marker. And so I love these bullet tips. And the marker, the colors, they have so many cool colors. Now again, if you're wanting to blend a red and a yellow and make an orange, you might get a little bit of orange in there, but it's not going to be a nice smooth blend. They're not made for that. They're not made, they're not like, they're not watercolors like the Kuretake Zig watercolor real brush markers the, that are real watercolors. These are just water soluble and so, but they're fun. They're fun for this kind of thing. So if you just kept, you know, just have your markers there, you can go in there and just, you know, color, you know, little things. Like there's a little hair, here's this little broom. Go in there and, you know. It's just fun to fun to play with. Okay, I recommend the Crayola Super Tips. Okay, so let's continue on. So again, this was started out with just a wash of blue. I went in and shaded, and also added some little white. It could either be snow or water. It's to me, it's like they're all coming to the pool here. So. Again, same thing. I did a wash of olive green and then went in here and shaded and colored. Now, that's probably one of the super tips here where I did an example uh, another day, you know. So, yeah. So, I'm doing some backgrounds and washes. And, um, yeah, and then I'll go back and play with the little bits. Here's where I've done the background here with the dark blue star shooting stars and I've done a wash of color on the swans and a wash of color on the little uh, goldfish. Okay, and now I'll go in there and add detail and shading. I don't think, I, well here I started a little bit of shading right there. But it's right now it's just got the watercolor wash and the background. The background is acrylic. Again, I just use Americana Craft Paints for my acrylics. They they will not stick your pages together either. If you're using a professional artist grade acrylics like in the tubes, if they have any kind of sheen to them like that, they will stick your pages. That's why I do not use that kind of paint even in my art journal, my collage journal, my mixed media art cards. It's all done with Americana craft paint. They don't sponsor me. Maybe someday. Right now. <laughs> They're not sponsoring me or anything like that. I'm just saying this. It is my favorite acrylic paint. Deco art. And, the, and it has changed. Let me see. Here. This is what the new bottles look like. They have the name at the top. So the, the packaging looks a little different. This is the new packaging. Do not get satin. Do not get gloss. Satin and gloss will resist your wax pencils. Okay? You want just... And it's not going to say matte on here. I don't think it says matte anywhere. But just the plain Americana craft paints are already matte. If they are satin or gloss, it does say satin and gloss or, a, or metallic. Those, your pencils are not going to go over those. Just get the plain ones, the plain ones. And they're always on sale. You know, you can get them for, you know, on sale for 75 to 89 I think normal price is $1.29. Uh, so, you know, they'll have 30% off total purchase of them. And they're always on sale. Yes, I think so too, Laura. They now let me let me say this: that uh, Mer uh, Deco Art does have a an artist program. I I haven't seen it this year. Last year, I think Sherry got some free paints, and they they do a they have a blogger program, and they have an artist sponsored supply program where if you write them, and I've done it before, and they have sent me paints in the past. This was like before the official sponsored artist thing 
So this was a, quite a few years ago. I got a few, you know, I think I asked them for 10 colors or something like that. Um, but, you know, you could fill out the, and it's a, quite a long questionnaire. It's quite extensive. They want to know your blogs. They want to know your Facebook. They want to know your YouTube. They want to know everything. So it's quite an extensive um, application to fill out. Um, but I'm not sure if they're doing that anymore. I don't know. I haven't looked into it in a year or more. So anyway. Okay, so here is where I've, um, I've got the background painted here with the black. I've not added any stars or planets or anything on this one yet. And I've just got a wash over the, um, the elephant. I haven't done any. Well, I did do a little bit of blue in here with a gel pen. Because somebody said, well, I want to see something with a gel pen. So there's some metallic gel pen or shiny gel. There you go. Some shiny gel pen details in baby blue that's in there you can see a little bit so you can use all kinds use your markers your gel pen don't be afraid to mix it up now that being said you do want to be aware that your color pencils are probably not going to go over your shiny gel pen so what it, you know but a lot of these little tiny bits you're not going to shade and layer anyway you're going to get in there and color <laughs> you know so just be aware and that's why you always want to test things in the back so you can see where I've tested different things um, what's going to happen? Well, can I go over that gel pen with the pencil? Will it, you know, you want to know. You want to know. Thanks, Bloom. I'm glad you find it informative. Okay, so here's another example. Somebody did ask me uh, just recently. Um, I guess they watched this video. And I get comments every day on old videos. I mean, I get tons of emails. And I am on, if you comment on any video of mine, I will get an email on it so I will know if you comment I try to answer or at least like every comment that people leave me on YouTube I'm still able to do that I mean you know I'm only at I'm almost at 11,000 subscribers and and I'm almost I think I'm at 980 something thousand I'm almost at a million views but you know as long as I can still have the time to answer and comment on every video I do try to do that so I guess the person watched this um, where I showed this or did this a while you know back and they asked well how do you shade because you said we can't shade pencil over metallic what do I do to shade that and my answer would be with paint so you, you can either like for instance right here it's real lightly painted gold here it's another extra layer of gold here's a third layer of gold but if the gold is not shading enough then I will go in here with say a blue gray a brown and do a wash right over the top because the paint will go over paint will go over your metallic but color pencil it's just not going to, you know, you can probably get something on there, but it's not going to look smooth and nice and all that. So if you want to shade on metallic, my suggestion is to shade with paint. Whether another layer of the same thing, or maybe a brown on top of gold, a blue on top of silver, something like that. Okay? <clears throat> Yeah, you might have to, if you're in, in another country, you know, you might have to order some of the things I mentioned online, you know. Thanks, guys. Yeah, I'm, I'm excited to almost have a million views. And today, not this video, but the one I did, the first video, this is the second video I've done today. The first video I did today on the um, uh, Flow Magazine and the uh, Planner, that was my 600th video. So I just hit 600 videos in two years, which, you know, I know I've been streaming for six. Well, going on seven now, um, over six years I've been streaming, but I've only been uploading to YouTube. And I'm not, I'm not trying to brag. It may sound like that to some people. I'm proud of the accomplishments any YouTuber or you streamer makes. Hang on, my camera, I bumped into it. Uh, I'm I'm proud of any uh, accomplishments that our youth streamers or YouTubers or bloggers make, and I shout them out. But, you know, I'm proud of the amount of work I've done on my show, too. So, you know, I'm not bragging, kind of, maybe a little, but I'm happy with it. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so anyway, guys. Okay, so here we've done the background here. I painted in uh, the, the background a, a gray. And I just did a, a wash down here of acrylic with a brown and a wash here. 
but what I wanted to show on this one is then I took, uh, thanks guys, I took a white pencil and and um, this is, again, because that's acrylic paint, you couldn't do this on top of a pencil. Let's say I just colored this whole background with a gray pencil. There's no way you could take a white pencil and now and do this on top of pencil, you know, and see, and then, you know, make that smoky look. You can't do that on top of another, you know, layer of pencil, but you can do that on top of acrylic. So I'm doing kind of all smoke, and this is all, I'm going to make it look like all these creatures are coming out of smoke. So I went all along the edge here and did smoke. Thanks, guys. Yeah, and we, you know, we should, you know, we work hard at these things. I mean, if you're not a, you know, if you're not a streamer, a YouTuber, a blogger, you know, sometimes people don't realize how much work and time goes into these things, especially like behind the scenes. You, you know, you just don't know. And, you know, we don't expect you to know. But it is a lot of work. And so we, <laughs> it's an accomplishment for sure. Right, guys? Okay, so here is, I think this is the one that Laura was working on, that she got it too dark on one side with the, the paint. If, if I'm not mistaken, right? Is it Laura or Jay Love? One of y'all were doing this and you got it too dark on one side. I would still roll with it. Personally, this is what I would do. I would darken the other side <laughs> and make them the same and then go in here with your white pencil or light blue and, and of course, shadows too. Yes, we support each other. Exactly. And that's why here on my show, guys, I allow links. I allow you to talk about other people's classes. You can talk about your YouTube, what when your times are. We share all that here. I do not mind sharing my time with you guys. If you're here and you have you just started up a YouTube and you want to tell everybody, I just started a YouTube. I got three followers. Can y'all come follow me? I'm not promising you that everybody here is going to go follow you, but I'll let you announce it. You know, so you're free to do that. You know, we we do that here. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so who was it? Was it J-Love or Laura that did this too dark? Yeah, it was Laura. Okay, so what I would do, Laura, if you got your one side too dark, I would kind of darken up the other side. And then, if you know, because it's acrylic, you can go in here. Let me find a dark spot here, like on this gear right here. And go right over it. Because it's acrylic paint, your pencils will go right over the top of your acrylic paint. So just because it's dark, and I saw the, the example, you know, I saw, saw what you showed. You can still see the lines. When, when Laura said that she got it too dark, she doesn't mean that she got this like flat acrylic. You can still see all the lines in her page. Just one side's darker. But look how this wash looks, Laura. See how there's dark sections and dark spots and some areas that are not so dark? That's a cool effect, actually. I mean, I think it looks cool to have dark and light areas. But then when you go in here with pencil, your pencil will go right on top of any of your acrylic. So, yeah. Laura goes, follow me. <laughs> Put your link in there, Laura. <laughs> You're so bad, you girls. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here again, I painted the background pink, and then uh, I started, you know, with just a wash is right here on him, and I did start a little bit of shad shadowing here with some pencil, just a touch. And different, um, my pages also, guys, realize a lot of my pages are in a state of flux, because if I'm showing this, and someone goes, well, what's going to happen on there? I'll just start doing something on it. So you're going to come back, and you're going to see that I have a page that has just a little bit of something on it, and not anything else is because I'm here on the show and I'm talking about different areas that I might just do a little something on, right? <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, I froze for just a second. Um, then you went, oh, you went over your lines with a black pit pen. Okay. Okay. Well, you can still go in there and shade. But yeah, that is one of the things. If you are going to use acrylic paint, washes, you have to have it very watered down. 
And if you're not sure if it's going to work, you know, go to your back page here and do a test. Wash over, you know, one of these little sample things in the back and see what happens before you go over with your page. That's always test. Okay, so let's keep rolling here. All right, the bluebird's got a wash of blue. And you see how I did it darker and lighter? I, there's still darker areas of the wash, but I can still see through it. But then there's some areas that are real watered down. And see, I want that watercolory look. And then I'll do this shading on top. Then my background is a flat brown acrylic paint. And then I went in here with white pencil and started doing, no, I take that back, sorry. That's a yellow, um, yellow ochre pencil and started doing blending in there. And then I just kind of did some little blue swirls, very loose around these little butterflies. Don't be afraid to, you know, play. And if you, like Laura found out, oh, well, I better, like, lighten up on the, the thickness of the paint. She won't do that again, you know? <laughs> you know? Okay, so the background here, I painted all the background black, flat acrylic paint. Now, when I do, when I say black, <coughs> flat acrylic paint, that means there's no water. Now, my brush might have a little tiny bit of water in it because I'm cleaning it or, you know, re-cleaning re, um, out my brush or something. So, But I always damp off any excess water. So it's flat black. People go, well, how do you get your black so flat? Well, sometimes you might have to add a couple of layers depending on the book, the paper, and all that. But for the most part, there's, there's no water in it. It's straight out of the bottle black. So that's why it's so flat and not watercolory looking. It's because there's no water in it. I'm going to test out washes today on stream. Oh, okay. Put what time, Laura? Put your time in there. And then, and then the other thing, Laura did mention using a, a pit pen on on out re-outlining something. If you have there's certain pens like I've not found that a technical these kind of pencil pens don't um, go through my sharpie pens, not sharpie marker. Sharpie pens don't go through. Pit pens seem not to go through. So instead of like saying getting paint right up in that little bit right there you can either go in there with your pencil or a pen and get right up tight so you have nice crisp black lines so if you're not real um, happy with that you can paint that neatly then what I do is I paint right up to about a sixteenth of an inch paint up to right as close as you feel comfortable then go in there with pencil or a pen and get right up on it Okay, and you get right up on it. But if you want to do the, um, if you want to do that effect where you have either smoke or a halo or anything like that, your white pencil is not, if you, let's just say you went up to about up to this line with your uh, paint, and then you went in this far with pencil. Your white pencil is not going to do this on top of your pencil black pencil so reserve pencil to write as little as you can okay your pencil will go over your pit pens and your and your you know markers but if you have this colored in with black pencil I've shown this demo before let me do it one more time because it is important here is a black I'm just gonna go real dark here this is a black pencil right your black uh, Prismacolor pencil and then here <clears throat> let me just get out a little dab here if it's if I, if this might be clogged up let me just get in here here is some black paint all right now I gotta let that dry but you'll see in just a second this is why this is why you can do this kind of look and these kind of effects the smoky the halos and all that let me just hit this with the heat gun to dry it quicker, okay? This is why I use acrylic paint backgrounds rather than just coloring them in with a pencil, okay? So I can do this because here's black pencil, here's acrylic paint, my white pencil. No matter how much I bear down with my white pencil, I'm bearing down as hard as I can 
and I know it's smearing, but I want you to see what happens. On the pencil, black pencil, white pencil. No matter how much I bear down on that, I'm never going to get white. This is black acrylic paint. I'm going to take a feather touch, feather touch, and look. Can you see the white line? Now if I want to color it, now look, I'm putting a little bit more pressure on there. Look what I can go, look what I can do on top of acrylic paint. Pencil on acrylic, pencil on pencil. This is why I like to paint my backgrounds with acrylic, right there. <laughs> and this works with any color. You can go on top of acrylic paint. Not only does it give you the tooth, but you can pencil on top of acrylic paint like you can't on top of there. Okay? So, you can do things like this on top of acrylic paint. You can't do that on top of pencil. Okay? And I show this every now and then because new people always, you know, why do you paint a black acrylic paint? That's why. <laughs> and that goes for any color. You know, like we did this brown one over here and the yellow ochre pencil. Same thing. It's because this is acrylic paint with pencil on top that you can do this. You can do this on top of acrylic paint. See? All right, so let's move on. All right, so here is where we've got, oh, this one I left half undone. I, I might have just forgot, but it's a good a place to show an example. So here is where I did not paint right up to the bird, okay? Now, I can go in here with a pencil or a tinier brush, and it's going to depend on your acrylic paint and your color sense as well. Like, if you don't have this exact color pencil, you, it's going to show, you're going to be able to tell that that's not all flat right there, right? But a couple things. One, you can go in there with a tinier brush if you really want to match that exact color and just fill it in with your acrylic paint. Or you can do your other things like this <laughs> with your white pencil and on top of the acrylic paint. See? So you can do multiple things. Um, but if you have your color pencils match fairly well, then you can get pretty close up to it or just paint it. Hey, Lulu. And then down here, I think we just filled these in here with some, uh, show, I think I showed again how you can just use your uh, bullet tip markers to go in there on some of these tiny bits, you know, that you may not want to do pencil. You can use your markers. I'm trying to show you as many tips as I can. Okay, so this one, I, I painted the whole background a maroon brownish red. I think it was ox blood. Might have been cherry uh, wine. And painted the whole background that. Then I took the uh, yellow, I think it was a yellow ochre pencil and made it look like almost like fire. Like the city was on fire because you know we got King Kong here. And um, so did, but the only way you can get that effect is acrylic paint with well, not the only way. I don't want to say, like, that's the only way. But the easiest way <laughs> to get that kind of effect is if you have... Oh, there's my male lady. Oh, she's bringing something up to the door. Is he bringing me a package? <gasps> He's bringing me a box. We might have happy mail to open. So it's the flat acrylic paint. And then I've gone in there with pencil to make it look that effect. And you could even go in here with lighter color if I really wanted it to. Let's see, let me get a yellow. If you really want to give it a glow, then you can get in there with even brighter and make it look like it's really, you know, see something like that. Just had a flashback from the 70s version of the Spider Man cartoon with that background. <laughs> Gary. 
<laughs> and then he's just got a wash of gray on him and no detail yet. But you see how I've done, you know, I kept it a watercolor look. So you can do darker washes, medium, light washes, and then go in there. But I'm also, when I do this, guys, I'm not in here with the gray paint going, okay, I want some darker wash here. You could do that. Don't get me wrong. I'm just randomly washing over it. Some areas get darker, and, and you know, I might add a little bit of extra wash where I know there's going to be a shadow, but I'm not being overly particular about that. So that's just me. Okay, again, purple background. It doesn't look purple on the camera. It looks blue. That's weird. My color is a little off there because this is a bright purple. It looks blue on camera, but it's uh, dioxazine purple. And then again, I've gone with the white pencil to make it look like they're busting through the water, you know, see, like they're coming through the water. So I did a, like a little halo effect around them. Okay. And then we, t we started coloring and shading this main one. And I added a little white line around him to kind of make him stand out. White Posca pen bubbles yeah so these main guys will look like this when we're done <clears throat> okay again this particular book guys I've, I've you know I'm kind of there's a lot more bases colored washes over the pineapples and then on this one I did a wash of the lime green then I went in there with the pencil and did little like moss looking things to make it like mossy so you can see in this case I did little swirly things to make it stand out so you can do all kinds of effects the yeah the uh, this one was the bane of your existence Laura. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, this was the first page I did in this book, and I even did a 10 second video on Twitter and Instagram on showing this. So what I did on this, is first I did the black acrylic paint. This one did take a while, and I did just get a small brush, and I got in there. I might have tweaked a couple of little spots, but I can see they're not perfect in there. So if I would have gone in there with a pen, with a technical pen, they would have been even tighter than they are. Then I can just see. I didn't go, you know, just did that with paint. So then, after I did that, I went on top of that with... Uh, a silver pen. I think I just used a gel pen and went over all the lines with a gel pen and then I went on top of everything with this this is diamond but I went over it with silver stickles. So you can see all the spider web has been gone over with stickles. Every spider spidey line okay now here's where I found out something. I did have a wash of red wa uh, watercolor. I think I used, or no, what did I use? I can't remember. Anyway, I don't even think it mattered because maybe it was even the acrylic. But what happened was is I went over with a lot of stick red stickles on the spiders and the base wasn't dry. So it did, now I've already, well, no, I didn't fix, fix this. I think I fixed this side. Yeah. So what happened was it did go through. Now, I'll just paint that out or go over, you know, paint it out white or I'll go over it with, you know, pencil color. It's no big deal to me. But be aware that the wetness of the stickles in such a large concentration did go through. So, yeah. Uh, and then I colored all the little bits with, I think I just used a mark, the markers and just went in there and colored all the little bits with the marker and then I did not color this side and I left it that way on purpose just so you can see the effect uh, before and after adding colors. I used the red crayon. Okay, so that's what it was. I did use a marker on that. Yeah, because I, I remember using markers on all this. So if you use a marker, if you use a marker on here, if you go over it with stickles, it will probably go through the page. Okay, so if you want to add stickles on top of something, use a gel pen or um, a pencil 
and then go over it with your stickles because that's what it was. It was the, the water solubleness of that caused it to bleed through when I added a thick blob of red stickles on there. So yeah, got a test. Got a test. But there it is with all the silver spidey. I love this page. So yeah. Okay, so again, I'm just going to kind of start flipping quickly and, and just so you can see. Again, here's some mech uh, mechanical moths. I did the washes of green. I have not added any shading yet. All I've done is the background. Painted it dark green and then I purposely did this very messy. I almost wanted it to give it the look that it's fluttering like this, you know. <laughs> you know how imagine like a mechanical moth would look if it was moving. I wanted that effect. <laughs> so I did real uh, scribbly lines on purpose to give it the effect that it's kind of like a mechanical flutter. So again, just washes. This is some, I'm going to do water. I'm going to make this an under, underwater tree. So I'm going to, because it's all fish in there. So I just put a little bit of white paint on there just for me to remi remind myself that this is all going to be like a, a water look. Uh, it's just right now, it's just, a, you know, the outline, if you will. Okay, again, background and washes. Background and wash. Now, we did do a little bit further um, on this. So, here you can see a wash. There's a wash and then shading. And I might have actually gone in here with some uh, marker, purple marker on those bricks. You can use these markers over your, uh, your wax, your Prismacolor. But it's got to sit for a minute, okay? So because because it's watery, you know, it's, it's watery. Uh, now, I wouldn't recommend doing it on a big, like, I personally, if I had this covered with, let's just say, a purple pencil, I wouldn't go in there and color a large area with the marker. It may be okay. But I found that if you just do some little bits in there and, and let it dry, it won't smear off. Okay, now that's with Crayola and with Prismacolor. I can't swear with every brand of pencil and every brand of marker. Got to do your own testing. You got to do your own testing. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I forgot to do some sound effects with the moth. I don't know. How's that? <laughs> you girls. Um, and so then I did fire. All this was with, I think most of this was with uh, marker. But again, acrylic wash in the background, color pencil, and then probably bits of marker in here. So, but you can see the difference in the castle with just a wash and a little bit of marker going on, and then pencil shading here. <laughs> Uh, again, you know, I I'm, I'm wanted this one to look kind of like dirt, so it's got a wash on it, but then I've gone in here with pencil and done all kinds of like scribbly type stuff. I want it to look almost like dirt, like you're seeing all this in a forest floor. Uh, again, you know, just all kinds of, you know, a little bit of uh, white pencil on top of dark blue water gone in here with a little bit of stuff. <laughs> you like that bet? Okay, it's good. <laughs> so I got a couple pages here that didn't have animals, so I didn't uh, do washes yet. This one has a whole flock of birds. So what I did is I just put a complete wash over the whole thing of light blue, then gone in here with the darker teal, and and then also, again, like here's a little feather right there. So you can go in there and, you know, do all kinds of little bits with pencil. I need to get crack a lack and if we're going to get through any more books. So let me just do a quick flip here of what we have done so far. It's all the same effect. Washes, pencil, and and nothing really finished. <laughs> Nothing's really finished in this book. Seashells. Nothing's really done. 
just some little experiments for you guys. Some washes. Some some just have a light wash. And so, yeah. So this one really has nothing except I consider this done. Because I'm not going to do anything else to this. I'm going to leave it. But this is probably my only, I would call, completed page. Uh, everything else is in, in, uh, in process. Okay, so that's Anamorphia and Imagimorphia. So, I want to show you all some more how we do it on time. We're only at an hour and a half, so we're good. What time is it anyway? 12. Okay, so I've got a little bit of time. I'll probably just stay, try to stay for maybe about 45 more minutes, maybe about till 1. Um, let me go out and get the Happy Mail. Y'all want me to go get Happy Mail? Where's my, uh, let me put my thing back here. Kind of need to refocus there. So, all right, let me go check my mail, get some hot coffee because my throat's getting really dry and my coffee's ice cold, and I'll show you some more color books that we've worked in. Again, may only be one page, maybe two pages, but I'll show you a few more color book pages. How about that? Does that sound good? All right, I'll, give me about one, give me two minutes, guys. Okay, hot coffee and happy mail. Hot coffee and happy mail in the morning. Well, afternoon. <laughs> okay, so this is from Julie Pie, Pyrol Julie. Um, let me open it up. It's a box. It's a, one of these priority boxes. The addresses are on the other side. Let's see what Julie sent. Hey, Ronj. I'm out of breath. I ran to the end of the driveway, got my mail, got my coffee. All right, so let's see here. Let me get this open. Hang on, guys. Y'all know how it's so sticky. Got my scissors. Okay, let's see. Thank you, Julie. Let's see what's in here. And I hope whatever it is, she doesn't mind me showing on camera. Because <laughs> I always show my happy mail most of the time. Unless then somebody says, don't show it. Sometimes that happens, but most of the time. Okay, so we have something wrapped up in a bag. Pretty washi tape. I love this washi tape. Let's put this washi tape in. Let's put it on the January page. Where's my January? Here's my January page. Whoops, I bit my I bit my page. There we go. Alright, so let's use these little hearts. Although the hearts really need to go in February. Although I'm receiving this in January. I'm gonna put it in February because they're hearts. Let's put this little heart washi tape in February. <laughs> so you can just decorate with anything, right? 
put some down here on the bottom. There we go. So we're already starting to decorate February. Is Dee Dee doing the drawing for the coloring page today? Um, that was last, that was on um, New Year's Eve, Pepper Kitty. That's already been done. That was done on New Year's Day. On, or New Year's Eve. And it's already been, that's already been even actually sent out. I've actually already sent out the color book, that one. Yeah, Pepper Kitty. Sorry. Okay, so let's go ahead and see what she's got in here. Ooh, what is this? What is Julie sending? Okay, looks like a tote bag. <gasps> Look at this. Don't tell me she made this. Oh, my gosh. It's a tote bag. Look. <gasps> it's an art bag. There's a letter in here. I'll open this up and see what she's going to say about it. Oh my gosh, guys, look at this. Look. Looky, looky, looky. Here's the handles, big straps. This thing is huge, guys. It's a huge tote. Oh my gosh. I just want to pet it for a minute. Let me move my coffee out of the way. Let's see what, uh, where's my ruler? This thing is huge, guys. It's like flat, flat. Now, obviously, you, you squish in the sides, you know, to make it, uh, but flat, it is like 18 inches wide, probably by 18 inches tall. It's huge. Isn't it pretty, Jean? It's so pretty. Look at these nice, thick straps. Oh, we're, we're savoring the, the moment. <laughs> I know. Carry my art stuff in here. I know, right? Okay, so let's see. She's got a little letter in here. For Dee Dee and Fibs. Let's, that's what the letter says. So now we know it's safe to open on camera. <laughs> I didn't know, but I just went for it. Let's see what she says. <clears throat> I made the carry-all bag for you, Dee Dee. Hope you like it. Dear Dee Dee, I'll bet you thought, wait, let me read this. So enjoying the new, this is some, oh, yeah, and also, she's the one that won, she's, and, and she's, you'll see her on the YouTube, she's the one that won the 10,000 subby pencils, remember she won um, the a few couple months ago when we hit 10,000 subbies. She's the one that won the Prismacolor pencils. In, in case y'all forgot that. New Prism, she's enjoying the new Prismacolor and coloring. Here is some happy mail for you and the Fibs. I'm so grateful to have been a winner and love your wonderful videos. You are magical and you are a bringer of joy. Oh, oh, Julie Pye. Pye, Pye wrote Julie, Julie, well, Julie Rose on YouTube. Julie Pie here. Oh. Oh, I know. So, Poscas. We were just talking about this, guys. Because, <laughs> you know, I have the white Posca. Never used any of the others. So, here's some Poscas. Um, she, I, I don't know. I don't know if she said it on YouTube. So, I better not say. I'm not, yeah, she, yeah, she has some things going on in her life, but I don't remember if she uh, said it, so I'm not going to. So, anyway, so, it, trust me, guys, I'm glad she won the pencils. So, and that she's using them. So, she sent some Poscas. It's a set of the eight colors. Sent that. So, let's see what's in the bag. There's something in the bag. I know. Oh, thanks, Carrie. Thanks, Jean. Let's see what's in here. Ooh. And the bag inside, look, it's all lined. It's, all, it's got pockets. Oh, my gosh. All right, let me just, off camera, let me set this aside. So I'll show you all this in just a minute. I want you all to see the inside. Oh, more little goodies in here. Let's set that right there while we look at the inside of this bag. Look, guys. We have to enjoy the awesomeness that is the art bag. Look, pockets in there. Pockets, pockets, pin pockets, phone pocket pockets and that's so cool look how nice this is oh my gosh 
It's just so lovely, isn't it, guys? Hey, Fran. Let's love it. And I love these big, thick straps. I mean, nice, heavy. You can put a lot of, because I think, I'm going to put a lot in here. If you're putting a lot in here, you want your straps to be able to hold up, right? Oh, it's just so beautiful. It's so quilty and gorgeous. Thank you so much, Julie. Thank you so much. And now, let's take a look at what she sent. Okay. So she sent, this is a Pretty Girl st Unity stamp. Let's see. We're going to have to do a giveaway, guys. You know we're going to have to do a giveaway. Some uh, some um, Christmas um, napkins. So we, we're going to have to do a uh, napkin journal page again soon. Okay. Oh, look. And it's the kind that, you know, it's got the uh, cling mount. So you put this, you know, this peels off. This is... Uh, for cling mount stamps. Look how cute. It's Unity Stamp Company. Pretty girls, what it's called. We'll do a giveaway. Y'all hang loose. We'll do a giveaway. Yeah, when I go to Savannah, yeah, Carrie goes, the next time you go to Savannah and shop at Blick, you mm -hmm. need to take that because I love the Savannah, the Blick in Savannah, Georgia, the one that's by the river. I know there's more than one, but the one by the river is like a Walmart. Oh, my gosh. Mm -hmm. Me and Cam, we just said, hey, y'all just drop us off here. Come back in a couple hours. We'll see ya. Cameron spent his whole time at the Copic rack. You know, the individual Copics just spinning mm -hmm. the rack and picking because I, you know, let him have a certain amount of money. And he was picking out. <laughs> he spent all his money on Copics. Now I might be next, you know. All right, so we're gonna do, we'll get we'll do a giveaway. We'll give this away here in a minute. <laughs> I don't, we'll give her away in just a minute, guys. Let's see what else she sent. Okay, so we have a Fairy Lane, Fairy Lane Enchanted Fairies to color. Oh, guys, how fun is this? How fun is this? So pretty. We'll have to give away. We'll, 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 you know, we're sharing. We give away here. We're going to do giveaways. And oh, and the other thing about the giveaways, guys, I've got all my, my, uh, I think I'm up to like 40 packs. I'm going to, you know, the once a week, the once a week um, packs of uh, Happy Mail packs. I've got them all ready to go, at least for 40 weeks. When we get down to 40 weeks, I'll see if I'll, I'm sure I'll have some more stuff to build. And, um, yeah, Fairy Lane. Then we got some more here. Oh, another Doodlers Anonymous. Oh, my gosh. I think we've already, we've given away, uh, I know I've given away at least one. So we're going to have to do another Doodlers Anonymous giveaway since we're doing color book. <laughs> so I guess what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to give away this today. Let's do this one today. Uh, we'll give the stamp away. We'll do this on like Monday or something, okay? Since this is a color book show and Julie, great timing. And then a Bella Grace. This is, uh, Bella Grace is a Stamping Tin publication. If y'all know that uh, Stamping, um, Stamping Tin and Company, who does Somerset Studio, the Somerset Coloring Studio, the Art Journaling, there's probably, and let me just look in the back here, it's probably back here. They have like probably at least 50 different uh, magazines. I've looked at it at the store, I've never bought a Bella Grace, so we'll, we'll have to do another, we'll do another giveaway with this too. Okay, so Bella Grace is one of their publications, and it's kind of, I think, it's more like uh, poems, quotes, stories. Um, that's this particular publication. So it's got beautiful photographs, poetry, stories. That's what the Bella Grace publication is. Isn't that awesome, guys? Look at that. Just stunning photographs. This would make an absolute fun magazine journal. You know, you know, we've done our magazine journals. So this would be an awesome magazine journal for someone to make a magazine journal out of. So I'm only going to give away this one right now. We'll give away the rest next week. 
But if you win this next week or the week after, because I got another giveaway as well, um, this would be an awesome uh, magazine journal. Just saying, magazine journal, Unity Stand, and these. There's a couple. There's two or three of each one, so I might keep two for our, um, for our what do you call it? Uh, our napkin journal and give away the rest. We'll give away the rest of them. Let's see. Let me keep two here. I'll keep these two to put in the magazine journal, and I'll give the rest of these away with the um, with the little stamp girl next week. Are we happy with that? All right. So thank you so much, Julie. So we're gonna go ahead and give away this, and I might I might test these. I might test these guys. So I think. Um, Oh, dang, we didn't finish looking at color books. How much time do we have? Let me see. If, let's do a couple more. Let's do a couple more color books. Just show real quick. Because I wanted to do all this in one video. I wanted all these this color book flip um, to be about, we'll, we're gonna, we'll give this away here in a minute. Let me just set it right there. Okay, let's make a pile. Let's make a pile here. Okay, because I wanted to show up. Oh, that's pop painting. Where's my pop manga? Hang on. Oh. Um. Here. Let me I wanted to continue showing pages that we've done in the color book. So hang loose a minute, guys. Okay, so continuing on with a few of the pages that we've previously colored. We got lost my light or something got whacked there. With <laughs> got a little dark. Look at my skin. See, I can always tell if the color's off when I look at my skin and <laughs> I look like I have a tan. Um, so the pop manga, we have done a few pages in this. Let's go ahead and do a little bit more before we go. I want to show some other pages we've colored. Again, making our own background, coloring our own, you know, little fog mist stuff around it. If you have any questions, put them in caps. We'll do the giveaway here in a minute. But I wanted to finish showing. So if my mods are here to help me herd cats. <laughs> so this one again, the narwhal. This is all paint. We painted our own water down there. And we put some little, little um, glow around the little birds or the little butterflies are flying, floating around our head. Painted the background black, put our own stars and planet in there. So again, that's one of the pages in uh, Pop Manga. Uh, I love this book. I really do love this book. Here's the Tree Girl. Again, orange background, um, paint and pencil. She's got purpley kind of... Um, undertone to her skin to make it look like the tree is like part of her. You know, I wanted her to look like she's in the tree. Uh, do I have one more in here? This one? This one we do with ink tents. Somebody asked me about ink tents. Now, I don't, I did not love the way my ink tents, and I know Eileen would say, well, I told you it's ink tents. <laughs> Eileen's not an ink tents fan. A lot of people are, though, so let's don't you know, let's don't diss on the ink tents. <laughs> but I did not like how um, it didn't blend like I wanted it to in the background. But this was done with ink tents. So, yeah, we try to use different supplies here. And then this one was just your, you know, paint and color pencil. So we tried to blend from green to orange to green again. And, um... Yeah, a little bit of wash in the background. So, yeah. Let's see if you can see her green eyes. She has pretty green eyes. So, that's in Pop Manga by Camellia de Areco. I know I'm not putting the right enunciation on that. But. All right. Then we have the Summer Nights and the Daydreams. So, in one, I've got a picture done in here. So here's, this one is the Daydreams, and these are the Hannah Carlson ones, and they're a hardback book. I'm not going to review the books themselves, because I've flipped through these. Every time I do a book or color in a book, I do a flip through if I haven't done a full-on review of it. So this one's got stickles. 
again black painted background and then you could take the pencil and um, do the shading so I'm loving that I figured out my camera settings guys again if you missed it at the beginning I talked about how my camera settings I could not figure out where's my sheet. I have a sheet of paper. I could not figure out why I could not get to the advanced settings. And right now it's a little off, guys, because I've been here for four or five hours, four hours I think, and um, and I haven't readjusted my settings since then, so it really needs to be readjusted. But at least now you can see the true colors of things. Um, when I tried to, I couldn't get to the advanced settings. I didn't know there was advanced settings on this camera. I knew on the C930E they had an advanced setting. You go to the advanced setting, you got a big pop-up window with multiple, you know, color and contrast and brightness and all kinds of things. Well, I got the C920, which is really a downgrade in price and quality, so they say. Um, but it had light lock. So I didn't want the flashing going on, so I bought this camera, but I only have the little basic box with like light lock and autofocus, and there was no advanced settings. Well, what happened was my advanced settings were covered up by my toolbar on my Windows screen. So that my could, I didn't see my advanced settings. I didn't know I had them because they were covered up. And then when I figured it out, I said, well, let me just slide this over. Let me just move my box. Well, this box would not move. It wouldn't drag. I could not drag this settings box away from my toolbar. So eventually, my, you know, lightning fast mind, it took an hour. I said, let's just move my toolbar to the side. <laughs> so I just moved my toolbar over to the right side of my screen. And now I see my advanced settings. And I can pop out my big all kinds of uh, tools <laughs> yeah I know I could I could do that too Jean but I didn't see at the time I didn't know I did not know my advanced settings were behind there <laughs> Anyway, so it does. It doesn't matter. It's on the right. It's on the left. Doesn't matter, you know. Uh, but now that I know that I can get to them, <laughs> so now I have my advanced settings in a big pop-out box. Which right now, the sun just came out some, and it's flashing. You know, it's making me, you know, my lighting in here. But anyway, I said all that to say, look, you can see good color on my color page. <laughs> Oh my goodness. So that I think that's the only one I've colored in here and I started another one. Started this one. And that's all I've done in this book. And then in the summer nights, the only one I've done is this back page right here, which reminded me of my daughter Denise, and I put the glass she didn't have glasses on, I put the glasses on. And added stickles. She reminds me of Denise when she was, you know, ten, twelve years old. So I um yeah, I painted her to remind me of Denise. So those are the only two pages that I have in these two done. I'm trying to just show y'all different ones that we've actually finished pages. Um, let me flip real quick, guys. The look book, which Jean is rocking this one. Um, I have done a couple out of this book that I've made. I did make copies of and did special for like Paula, Eileen. But most of the time, guys, I do not copy things out of the books and do a se separate page. My thinking is, is I'm going to color it once. I'm probably not going to color it a second time. Uh, the first camera I had dot was the C930E, which is in, in here. A lot, they're both Logitech, which um, according to the Logitech and, you know, their website and everything, and the price, it's like $129 when I got it four years ago, whatever. The C920, and it does not have light lock. It does have better clarification on some things. It is better on certain things. And right now, guys, I am, I need to, really, I need to reboot my computer. But anyway, um, the C920, 
which is a like $79, I bought about a month ago because it has light lock. But it didn't, as far as I knew, it didn't have the extra box with the color adjustment, the brightness, the contrast, the gain, the, all these other things. Because all I had was a little window. My advanced settings were hidden. <laughs> So now, now that I have all the advanced settings, I'll play with some it some more. I just discovered that yesterday, like l yesterday afternoon, I just discovered my full-on box of settings for the C920. But then I had my eye appointment. I went to the store. I went shopping. We came back. We got ready for the so-called if it's snowing. I got up this morning and started streaming. So I haven't had a chance to really play with my settings very much. So give me a couple more episodes, <laughs> and we'll have we'll have some better quality. And also, guys, in case you're watching this on YouTube, we do not get HD quality on Ustream unless you pay for it. So like when I'm streaming, like if I do a hangout with somebody. I have much better quality because uh, we have H. These are both both my cameras are HD quality cameras, but we don't get that high quality on UStream unless you pay for it. So yeah, so the quality is not going to be near as like a YouTube video. Like if somebody takes their DSLR, <laughs> you know, or even their webcam and do a video for YouTube, you know, it's not going to have. It's not going to, <laughs> you're shaking your head at me, Jean. You're not going to have the quality via Ustream with our live chat that you have otherwise. Okay, let's get finished here. So I want to do my giveaway before we run out of time. I'm going to flip backwards here. Um, so the lookbook is all different fashions. Uh, this, one has a, this one has a video, I think a three-part, two or three-part. Um, they're all fashions from around the world. And they're New York, Antwerp, Paris, Milan, and um, and just big, bold fashions, which is really, really cool. I love this book. I'd like to get back to it. I need to get back to it because I love this book. I love this book. But, you know, again, so Jean colored this one. Jean did that one. Awesome. Um, so many color books, so little time, right? So you can see the big, bold pieces. Um, so there's her. We did her. And again, I, black acrylic paint. The background. <laughs> Jean's shaking her head at me. So yeah, so that's the look. And again, I've colored two or three others out of this, but they're not in here. Um, the bicycle book. I love, love, love the art in this book. Okay, my camera is is crooked. <laughs> I think I bumped into it here a minute ago. Um, I love the bicycle book, but it's a it's a booger bear to color. You almost have to paint this one. And add just detail. The way that it is, it's almost requires you to paint. Because look at the backgrounds, guys. See the backgrounds? It almost just, you almost have to paint this. I've only done one page in it, although, and some backgrounds. So you can see where I painted in some backgrounds black. This book is has the best art in it. But it's uh, very tricky to color or paint. I'm just saying. Because it's got the painterly, like it's almost begging you to do paint, watercolor it, maybe some Copics. But again, one-sided, but it, you know, it's not, Copics will probably go through just about anything. But there's a cat on every page, and I did do a little, I did color the, the little cat on the bottom, let's see if I can even do it. I painted the cat on the bottom to go from white to tan to brown to black and back to white again. Like with a flip book. I don't know if I can flip it this way. Let's see if I can hold it up and flip it. Look at the little cat in the corner. See how you can make it into a flip book? And I turn them back to white again. But we've only colored one page, and I did do watercolor in it. So here's the page that we did. 
very tricky coloring because the elements for one are very tiny and and it just begs to have a painterly background so we did it but it was tricky business as paula would say tricky business i think that's the only one we've done so the bicycle book love that art for the art of it um let me see real quick try to kind of be quick about this guys hang on um jasmine books all right let me look up on the shelf for just a couple others that i might have colored something in I love this one and I haven't done anything in it. <laughs> this is the color of uh, the Monster Manga Coloring Manga book. And it's got all kinds of cool manga characters to color. I've just not done anything with this one yet. But I really want to. Um, Carlos Santang uh, Stanga, the Moleskin, the Moloskina people. This is the Wandering City. Again, it's got all kinds of cool uh, cityscapes and architecture and different things are from like all around the world. We have done one page in it. <laughs> Where is it? One page. This watch. And we did it all in metallics, which does not photograph well. When I photographed this, it just looked like it looked terrible. Uh, because the metallic doesn't show up. And then I did the, you know, jewels, the jewels, all in red stickles. So you can see, trying to see, it wants to metal and, yeah. There, there, you can see the, you can see. <laughs> see the silver gel pen, and then we have a gold gel pen, I'm trying to capture and then all the red are in stickles to make them look like rubies. See? If you can see the red stickles. That's the only page we've colored in this book. That one. Okay. <laughs> um, I've got a whole shelf up here, guys. I probably have one or two pages colored in them. I'm trying to just pick them out here. Um, uh, this one. I bought I bought this one at uh, Books a Million, the Grimm's Fairy Tale book. Again, it's a cute little book with you know the Brothers Grimm color um, fairy tales. Awesome little book with all the fairy tales in it. Right. Let me, I should probably go this way so you could see them better. We didn't. I've only started one page. I think Jack and the Beanstalk. That's all I've done. That's all I've done in this book. Started the Jack and the Beanstalk page there. The shadow here, right, guys, is because my laptop is creating a shadow from the the light shifted from outside, and now it's putting a shadow right there. So yeah. That's all I've done in this book. Again, love the book, love the idea of it, all the fairy tales. But, you know, so many color books, so little time. Um, where is, I got one more here I wanted to show. Not Animal Kingdom, but the, uh, what's the one, the underwater, what's it called? I can put my hand on it. Lost Ocean. Okay. Lost Ocean. We've done a couple in Lost Ocean. Um, you, you can get stickles at Hobby Lobby and Michaels. Of course, online. If you, I would recommend if you only wanted to buy one stickles, though, is to get the diamond one. Because the diamond one, when you go over anything else, it will, it will pick up the color underneath and give it a glitter. Lost Ocean, Joanna ba Basford's. I've got a couple pages in here done. Again, I'm not going to do a cut flip on this whole book because, you know, it, we've done that and y'all have seen it. Okay, so here's one that's not done yet. 
but it's got the diamond stickles and some orange stickles but you can see where we're not completely done with the little swirls around there but all this is hands i swore i put all that in there myself all these little swirls put all that in there myself so this is um not done but you can still see it we got this page this double page spread black acrylic paint white either gel pen or posca i don't remember what i used a wash of blue and then um, pencil and paint I think I use white paint and blue pencil in there to do the drips and then all of this is either marker you know these markers or and or gel pen all those little bitty bitty bits in there markers and gel pens so you can see is there one more in here is that it oh the other one is what's the one with the time chamber the time hang on i got the time chamber let me see if i can put my hands on the time chamber because i have some colored in that one too ah is this it no that's enchanted forest where's the time chamber Hang on, guys. Let me see if I can find the time chamber real quick. Must be on the shelf. Hang on. Hmm. Yeah, here we go. So the time chamber. <laughs> I'm trying to show you as many that I've got something colored in as possible. We did this one on a stream. Again, painted the background. Put in our own clouds so there's and some stickles there you go you can see the stickles stars so that one right there y'all can post barb's link she comes on it too guys this one this one took a while this one probably took longer than a well in my personal coloring, I, I won't say it took longer than like the, the ones that we've done 10 part shows on. But this one took a long time because of the black background in behind the balls. So it wasn't hard just to paint the background black. That wasn't so bad. But look, look at this detail. That was some time consuming stuff right there. So, yeah, you can see. The little cherry blossom tree. And I can't get any closer because I do have the autofocus turned off. I don't like my camera to zoom in and out. and, and It will autofocus, like close up, far away. But then it's constantly trying to focus, and I don't like that. It makes me crazy. So, yeah. So there's the... Uh, Oh, do I, and then this one I'm not quite done with. This one I wanted to do the world upside down. Even though it is an upside down world, right? So, and she, you know, she's flying through the world with the tassels. But how I did it was the stars are on this side. So I did it so it's either or like that. So, and this one's not done. I still have to, the, all the pagoda. Uh, I did do the tassels. I did the tassels with shades of purple with a little bit of white gel pen. Very thin. Very thin. And then take it. Let me do it with the Posca so it'll show up for you. Um, if you take, like here's a tassel right here. After you color it in, then you take your pen and go on top of it and go like sideways over it like that. It's kind of like you do hair. If you go across the grain, it gives you that realistic effect. See that? So if you go, you know, go a different direction, it makes it look... And the same thing for hair. If you do hair that way too, I have her hair in gold. But if you go across the grain of the way, it, it, then it gives it a more realistic look. See like there? See how I crossed over? Let's see, let's do another one. 
you cross over. See how that makes it look more realistic? Little tip right there. Same thing. See those little white lines like that? See, look. Very thin, but if you go across the grain, it makes, this, and again, if you do the same thing with hair, it makes little wispy hairs. Yeah, you can use Posca's, you know, I just haven't used any colors yet. I, I bought the white for the accents like that. That's why I bought the white in lieu of like a gel pen. It's a little thicker because I like to do my stars and things. So I think that's all I have done in here. So that's the time chamber. Okay, so we're going to go and do our giveaway. I'm not seeing anything else. Well, I got my secret Paris, my secret Tokyo. There's a few things colored in there. Uh, I have um, my Game of Thrones. I got one going in here. I got a couple in here. Let's see here. Okay, this one's just got the wash on it. So she's not been had anything done except the wash. And then this one, it's in, in a state of flux. You know, it's in, um, you know, he's uh, coming along there. And then this one, like the Snow Queen lady, I did her all in glitter and shine. See, she's got a coat of uh, uh, shine on her. And you can see in her hat, all the, there we go. See the stickles in her fur? So I still have more background here to do. But got her going. Do I have any more in this one? I think that's all in this one. So that's the Game of Thrones. Yeah, I did one in Romantic Country. Yeah. Um, let's see what else. I'm trying to kind of be quick here, guys. And, of course, anything that I've cut out, like some color books, like a lot of the Creative Havens, like the Kimono Girls, I've cut them out and used them in my art journals. I won't show that right now because we don't have time. But... Um, Let's see, got Magical City. What else is up here? But that's the bulk of it. It's not all of them. It's obviously not all of them, but you got to see a, a good selection. A good selection. So all of you guys that stuck it out in my mods here that can help me, um, like it looked like Sherry bailed. <laughs> She goes, I don't want to, I don't want to herd cats today. No, I don't know. She might have got kicked out. I don't know. She had to go. We're going to give the Doodler's Anonymous color book away that Julie Pie, Julie Rose Pie, uh, Pyrel Judy, or she's Julie Rose on YouTube. And uh, so she donated, gave us, gifted us some color books. And if you missed it, oh my gosh, she made this beautiful quilted bag for me. So we're going to go ahead and give this away. Let's move this out of the way. So y'all know how it works. Oh, I got to hang on. I got to get the iPad. Hang on. Got to get my random.org and it's easier to see on the, uh, it's easier to see on the iPad. So let me get that up. Oh, hang on. <clears throat> yeah, so how it works, if you, and most of you know how it works here. When I type in the word, when I type in the word, when I type in the word go, put in a number between 1 and 100. Let me bring this up here. One number only. The closest without going over will win the Doodler's Anonymous color book. All right, so let me get to random.org. Where are you? Come on, random, go. Okay, here we go. All right. <clears throat> All right, so here's my random.org. And then here's our little box that will generate a number in in just a second. Okay. All right, let me get a 
and I'm just kind of taking my time so everybody hears me because I know there's a lag. You don't have to tell me there's lag, people. I've been doing this six years. We know there's lag. <laughs> one to 100. When you see everybody putting in numbers, put your number in, okay? One to 100. <laughs> I tell you people, it's like herding cats. It is. It is like herding cats. <clears throat> okay. Everybody, give you a minute. Let me t sip a little coffee here. <laughs> And, uh, yeah, so thank you, Julie Rose, for sending in some awesome giveaways and for gifting me with a gorgeous quilted bag. Give everybody a minute. Put in a number. If you, you see there's numbers going by, people. You see there's numbers going by. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> it's tricky business. Tricky, Bill. Come back. All right, everybody. Last call for a number. Last call for a number. <laughs> Get them in there. She was explaining the rules, but typed. No, it's just that <laughs> you, well, there's a lag, Gene. I was done explaining the rules by the time the go came in there, so whatever. It's, you know, uh, I, I don't, I get, old, I, I'm over talking about it, you know. <laughs> Six years of explaining lag. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's crazy, people, crazy. All right. So here we go. Let's do a generate. Here we go. Generate. Come on. Generate. 56. Oh, okay. 56. Okay. That's okay. We all we all deal with it, guys. It's no big deal. We all deal with it, you know. <laughs> It's, it's a long explanation to do a giveaway. It is. I get it. So, 56. So, Carrie, Eileen. Oh, Sherry's back. Sherry's back. <laughs> it's okay. Y'all just go look at anybody that put it in there. Okay. Um, Lulu? Lulu had 56. Okay, that's all right. It's okay, Jan. It's no big deal. No big deal. All right, Lulu. Cherub Lulu. Cherub Lulu. Cherub Lulu. Lulu. I'm pretty sure I got your address right. Because I, I think you've won something before. Some art card or something. Yes. So, Lulu... Congratulations. If you want to resend me your address, feel free. Yep, it's the first one. That's why you got to put your numbers in quick, guys. <laughs> okay, so Lulu, make sure I have I'm I'm pretty sure I have your address, but just carry your um why don't y'all put my email in there real quick? No, you don't have your address. It's your first win. Okay. Okay. Well, get, grab my email address there from Carrie or whoever puts it in. Grab it, Lulu. Grab it, girl. Grab it. <laughs> uh, there you go. Right there, Lulu. Carrie just put it in for you. 
<laughs> Jean's Jean's holding out for the stamp on Monday. Yeah, we're gonna we'll do a drawing for this one on Monday. Let me put a note on there. Let's do this on Monday. Monday. Yeah, Monday we'll do this little girl here. Okay. All right, guys. Did you grab it, Lulu? Did you get it? Carrie's double checking. So thanks everybody for being here. Janet put it in too. Okay. Um, thanks everybody for being here. Thanks so much, Jan uh, Julie Rose, Pyral Julie Rose, for sending the awesome, beautiful bag and some giveaways. Yeah, let me try as well. I know the links I have. Well, I haven't refreshed my chat, so I can't put it in either. Just type it out with spaces, guys. Yeah, there you go. There you, there it is. Okay. We'll make sure, we'll make sure Lulu gets it. I hope y'all enjoyed. Yeah, no, somebody type it in there with no link for me, guys. I can't do it because I need to refresh my chat. Thank you, Dorothy. I cannot put it in without refreshing my chat and losing you guys. So <laughs> We'll make sure you get it, Lulu. <laughs> All right. Okay. So anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed the color book section, what looking at, and then the first segment, which I'm going to upload these to YouTube. Okay. And uh, y'all can see the planner, the planner idea, the flow book. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to head on out, guys, and we will see you all later. Hope y'all have a great weekend. We'll see you on Monday. And yeah, thanks guys. Bye. I have the Jasmine Beckett ones. I have, let me show you her two books here. Her two books are, and I'm also in her Facebook group. This one is just her first color book here. And she's a painter. So what she's done is she's taken her paintings and done turned them into line art and turned them into color books. So like this. Okay. And I've done flips and show and tells on all these books at one time or another. If you look in my YouTube playlist, look under color books, and everything that I've done with color books is in the color book playlist. Okay. And I tear these out. This is one that I'll tear out. I trim down. So I never care about getting out of lines. Like if I'm painting the background, it gets off that line. Because I know I'm going to cut it down right on that line and mount it on a black piece of paper. So this one is her first color book. And then she came out with the Halloween one. Again, I'll just quickly flip through so you get the idea of some of her artwork in here. And I really enjoy working on these because of the faces. I love doing her faces. So here's some of the ones that I've colored here. And again, I had my own background. Okay, I painted the background stars, made, gave her like a halo. So don't think that just because that's not there, you can't add it yourself. I love me some painted backgrounds, especially black with space. That's just, I like doing that. So here's another one. Again, the names of the girls, the, of course, Jasmine Beckett, but the names of the pieces, I think this is Sea Beacon. I think this one's called Sea Beacon. I painted all the water, did all this with paint, and then you can go back in with color pencil. Painted the sky, the stars, the planets, put all that in. Put a glow around the ship and a little bit of glow around her. Okay. So I'm just going to kind of flip through just so you can kind of get an idea of some of the pages that we've colored. There are videos for these. 
Um, I think there's a video for this one. I don't think there's a video for this one. There is a video for this one. So there are process videos for most of my color book pages. Not all of them, because sometimes I just want to color and I'm not making a video, right? So, <laughs> uh, same thing for her. We did her with dark skin and I made her have like braids. I put those in to give her a, a nice braid hair. So, and there are stickles on this. Let me let me take one out to show you. I did add stickles to um, revisit. It's kind of like my color book portfolio. Now, if you have pages, let's get rid of that glare. If you have pages that are 10 by 10, nine and a half, not you know, the larger square color books are not going to fit in these page protectors. So if you did want to sleeve those, what I've done is I have a 12 by 12 color book um, or I'll have a 12 by 12 idea binder that I'm probably going to designate to color book pages uh, to put larger pages in. So if it's like a 10 by 10 page, I can put that on a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock and put it in a larger binder. The ones that I do not tear out of a binder, I mean out of the color book, are ones that have stories to them, like my mouse guard. Now this one is already you know, 10 by 10. So it's not going to fit in these sleeves anyway. But it's also a story. It's a continuing thing. So I don't want to separate them out of the book. So if you have like the Hobbit, the Sherlock Holmes, the Outlander, any of those that are story themed like that, you probably want to leave them in the, bu in the book itself. Because, you know, if you want to color a whole bunch of them, you want to keep the story together. Whereas things like this, they're individual stories in and of themselves, and I will take them out and put them in this in this binder. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. So, but you have to be flexible to do this kind of thing because if you like all your color books all lined up on a shelf, nothing bent, torn, or you know, then this this system is not for you. Me, I will just I will take apart a a, a journal, a color in a heartbeat doesn't bother me at all and read revamp it so but I, I do understand that not everybody can do that yeah so you'll need it goes I don't separate mine exclamation exclamation see some people just can't do it and that there's nothing wrong with that I'm just showing you how I do it <laughs> you <know? laughs> uh -huh. okay so these are my Bennett Klein ones that I've done here, right here at the beginning. Uh, he's in the front of the book. And this is the one we just finished. Okay. And there's videos. I think there's videos on the bulk of these. Um, I don't know if there's one on this. And I don't know if there's one on this one. There's. I think there's one on this. There's one on this. Uh, definitely one on this. This was a 10-parter. This was the longest series of a color book page I've, I've done. This had like 10, pa 10 uh, parts. So those are my Bennett Klein ones. Then here's my Doodlers Anonymous. Now, sketchy. This, you know, where you uh, can uh, draw, people upload photographs of themselves for you to draw. Well, they had a sketchy did a color book thing a few months ago. So this was the picture that I colored for that challenge. Somebody posted the um, image of a of a girl to color and uh, so this was the one I selected to color this one is out of this is just out of one of those generic color books I think it's on the back uh, and what I do though is I'll take a, a color book page and like I painted in my little emu here added some collage here so just because the color book has a you know a designated something going on doesn't mean you can't take it apart revamp it repurpose it add your own touches to it because you know my saying you're the boss of your color book <laughs> And I just have dividers. I haven't even put the tabs in here yet. This one is from the Kimono. Um, this is from Creative ha Haven. I think it's called K Kimonos. 
And I did have a YouTube girl ask me um, about the makeup on these. So and what did I use? And I'm almost 100% sure it's color pencil. So it's just a color pencil blend out to do her makeup. And uh, yeah, this one was out of... And I'm, I'm, again, guys, I could take the backs off and see what page they all are. This was um, a page that had um, these cherry blossoms. So what I did is I added my own collage elements. You can see where I added clocks, watches, all around. This girl is just out of a magazine. She's just a, in the fashion magazine. But her outfit and her clothing and everything it just fit to what I wanted to do with the cherry blossom. So I added my own little watch parts to her and and did like a wash of pink over her and colored her in and made her kind of blend in added all the stars behind it so yeah so don't be afraid to make a color book page your own if y'all have any questions just put them in caps i'm trying to i'm kind of zoomed in here and just kind of making sure i can get the whole thing here uh, and here's another one out of the kimono book again it's she's just got blended it's just like it's just one color actually it's just a, like a dark pink or a light red with white over. It's just all, just blended. So, yeah. So, color pencil. Added my own little dots to the background. Thanks. Yeah, I like the pink and black. And again, I cut this out of the book. Cut this out of the book and mounted it on a piece of black cardstock. Okay. Then we have... Again, I know you all can't do this. I tore the cover off mine. I tore the cover off my book and made it into a um, divider. <laughs> and um, so, yeah, so these are my Doodlers Anonymous pages. I did tear out the uh, intro page and about the page. And then here's all my Doodlers Anonymous pages. Again, hopefully, guys, I, I, I'm fighting the light outside. It's going dark and light, dark. Cause it's getting ready to snow or rain. Um, yes, uh, yeah, Ben, I, when I post Bennett Klein, he's always so nice. And, and, and guys, if you do not follow Bennett Klein's uh, group on Facebook, he has a, a group. He's so nice, so generous. And everybody over there is so nice. Yeah, and he, I follow him on Twitter, Twitter and Instagram, and he liked my page yeah so so these are all from doodlers anonymous and i'm not going to talk about them i'm just going to kind of flip through um none of, like for instance the, none of this water was here paint your own stuff in make your pages your own okay here's ocat that's the owner of uh, doodlers anonymous i put a tattoo I put a tattoo on him. <laughs> and Doodlers Anonymous did a nice write-up on me on their site, too. Again, if you want inspiration for doodling, creativity, illustration, go follow Doodlers Anonymous uh, website and group. Oh, my gosh. You will never, ever be out of inspiration if you follow Doodlers. Just saying. So these are all pages out of Doodlers Anonymous. This was a double page spread, so of course I kept them together. Again, none of this was here. I made it a stormy sky. I know, I love Doodle. I have, I have two copies too, Terry. <laughs> I love me some Doodlers Anonymous. So you can see, I've got lots of pages here of Doodlers. And we did, this was the last one in Doodlers we did. We, um, we did uh, Fibs, Friends in the Box. And we put all these little letters. I say we, because if we're doing it here live, it's we. <laughs> And there's the vintage typewriter, and yeah. And I always try to uh, accent or keep the profile, the artist that drew it, by coloring it different, or making sure that um, making sure that the artist's name doesn't get covered up. You know, I try to do that on all of them. Like down here on the water, I made sure not to cover up the artist because I want to know the artist that drew these. You know, we're just coloring these. Every Friday with Bennett Klein, it's, yeah, he gets a freebie sketch. Yeah, I'm like, no, he's all so generous, so kind. Okay, then the next section I have, this was off of... All right, welcome back, everybody. I got hot, fresh coffee, 
and art in the morning. This is Dee Dee. We are a live show on Ustream.tv if you're watching the recording on YouTube. Thanks for watching there. If you're watching here in the live chat, if you have a question, put it in caps so I know you're talking to me. We uh, did a, a review a little while ago of the flow book for paper lovers so there'll be a video of that up in a, after a while and so now we're just uh, because a lot of people are asking about different color books and which ones they should color in or want to and we all have tons of color books so I thought and I, I know I'm not going to hit every one I know I'm going to forget some of them but I thought I would show a like a color book review and these will probably pretty much all be what I did last year these are color book pages um, that I have colored last year. My hands are a little cold. See, I just turned on the heater. Respecting snow in Atlanta. All the bread sold out in the whole, in the, in the whole state. There's no bread to be found in <laughs> Georgia. Okay, so um, the first thing that I want to show here is my binder. So in my binder, any pages like out of my uh, Bennett Klein books, one, two, three, four, The Dark, any of his books, which are your eight and a half by eleven, eight by ten, if you you know, depending on the border, but eight and a half by eleven size pages that are one sided, like my Jasmine Beckett Griffith, my um, a few other ones. I will take them out of these books, put them in page protector sleeves, and put them in a binder. I will look at them much more than I will if they're just on a shelf in books that are unfinished. This is this is the, the last one I worked in was this this one here and I'm pretty sure I put it in here. And what I'll do on a one-sided color book page is I'll take it out. I will put a piece of black cardstock behind it and on the back of that cardstock I will write the name of the book and the the artist. And, and you can put the date, you can put whatever you want on it. But I would recommend writing on the back of your page the book you got it out of and uh, the artist so that you don't forget that. So these first ones here are out of my Bennett Klein books. Um, again, there's probably one out of one, two, three, and four in the dark. Anyway, they're on the back. But because I can put double pages, so like on the back here is another page. So this way I can look at them. Now if you really want to, and I showed these the other day when I talked about Bennett Klein's pages. If you really want to see, see, look how different they kind of look with the page protector. It's, you know, more matte. And plus the glitter of the stickle shows up when you pull them out. But I just feel like this is the best way for me 